From Marsh Bernalino Stadium in Kenner, Louisiana, it's Fighting Patriot Football on YouTube via JohnCurtisPatriots.com alongside Danny Wimpron and Kevin Fayard. Robbie Utzer is in the booth producing tonight's broadcast, and of course, a fellow alum, uh, Gord Bear, is on the sideline giving us reports from tonight's ball game. Tonight, the John Curtis Christian Patriots ranked number one in Class 5A by the Louisiana Sports Writers Association. They come in with a record of five wins and, excuse me, seven wins and zero losses and are 3-0 and in the Catholic League. Holy Cross has a record of five wins, two losses, and they are 2-2 two and two overall in Catholic League play. We want to thank our pregame sponsors, Walter and Bill Sanchez, class of 1977, and younger brother Chris Sanchez, class of 1980s. Proud Yogi's Bears, proud sponsors of Fighting Patriot football. Danny, the Patriots are playing really, really good football in recent weeks, uh, more specifically the last three weeks. Uh, last week, the Patriots racked up 58 points against St. Augustine, which is the most points against a Catholic team ever. And then the uh, margin of victory versus St. Aug, 35, was a, the most ever against the Purple Knights. However, the Patriots need to carry the momentum into tonight's ball game. Coach Scott LeCamp got a very much improved ball club at Holy Cross. You know he's having prime for uh, a big uh, upset against the Patriots tonight. No doubt about it, Kevin. You mentioned Guy LeCamp. He was an assistant coach back when Salmon was kind of our, the thorn in our heel back in the uh, mid-'90s. Also, of course, Coach Mandeville, and we jamboreed him a few right. times. So he knows the Patriots. It's not his first time going against us. Um, very capable. They have a good bunch. They're playing good football right now. The biggest thing for us is, like you mentioned, the last three games this season, we've played very well. Been very efficient with the ball. Didn't turn it over at all. Scoring every drive last week. It really doesn't get any better. The defense is shutting people down. The depth and the maturity of this team is really starting to show and come out. Want to see our special teams show up in a big way tonight. But we're really playing good football. You know, towards the end of the season, you want to keep guys healthy. You want to hit on all cylinders. You want to be very efficient. You want to take care of the football. And we're doing all those things right now. So I'm very happy with what we're seeing right now from the Patriots. I hope tonight is the exact same way. Um, you know, we're out here at Musburg Little Stadium again. Yep. Well, I don't know if it's fortunately or unfortunately. <laughs> but as you guys can see, we're out here yep. uh, kind of in the bleachers. and uh, But awesome Awesome atmosphere, homecoming week, yep. homecoming game. So got a lot of stuff going on. They're they're representing the guys from the seventies yep. tonight. Uh, you brought your deuce deuce jersey tonight oh, because yeah. it's it's thirty years for 30 you. Thirty years, my senior year. Yeah, senior season of playing football yep. uh, is is this year. So my boy is still representing. It's still looking good. I tell you what, if I had I'm mine on, there. I would not be standing in front of you. But. Uh, <laughs> But I tell you what, you're looking good, big boy, no, for, for 30 it. years, man. Not too bad. Not doing bad. No, I hear you. Hey, as always, uh, when I mentioned John Curtis Christian School this year, celebrating 56 years of excellence, and as always, continuing to build champions for life. The uh, the Patriots lead the all-time series with the Holy Cross Tigers 5-0. Uh, to Last year, the, the Patriots defeated the Tigers 35-17. Uh, to The first two times these two teams played uh, was in 88, uh, excuse me, 89 and 90, and then 2015 on with uh, when we joined the Catholic League. That's right. And... Uh, they weren't that good last year. But with Coach Comp has come and changed the culture, the attitude. Uh, the Tigers started the season off three wins uh, against uh, some inferior uh, uh, talent and teams. Yeah. But you know what? But that's what they needed because they were so loose, used to losing on recent right. years. They needed that. However, they had some injuries. When they got into Catholic League play, they opened up with Jesuit and got hammered pretty good. And then Rummel thumped them pretty good as well. So, you know, they're looking to rebound and play better ball against us. And they are that kind of team. So the Patriots going to have to jump on them early and get them out the game. Well, that's what I was going to say, Kevin. It, Changing a culture is difficult, but I think Coach LeComp is trying to do that there. Kids need some time to buy in. They need some time to understand that you have to do what you have to do week in and week out. It's a business trip. It's a business week. You have to do what you have to do each and every week, and you have to get better one game at a time, one game at a time. So I'm sure they're going to come out tonight trying to fire at us. You know as well as I do, the Patriots show up. Everybody's ready to play. That's right. Again, I said you know, mentioned the Patriots beat St. Aug last week, 58-22. to Holy Cross beat Brother Martin 7-3. to Right. Yeah, so they, they, they can Surprise. play. Surprise. Yeah. We're going to pause for an invocation to play of the National Anthem. For the playing of the National Anthem, Reverend Welch will now deliver the invocation. Can you bow your head with me? Our Father and our God, we are humbled by your grace and your mercy that you so freely give us in the Lord Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross for our sins. Thank you for these outstanding schools tonight that will compete on the field. Thank you for the work that these young men and coaches have put in from summer until now as they persevered through the season and gotten past the halfway point. We ask you tonight, Father, to look over them, to protect them from injury, 
and to help them to display Christ-like character and competitiveness on the field. In Proverbs, it says hard work pays off. Let their hard work pay off tonight in a team-like spirit and a perseverance that says Christ loves the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we will have the playing of the national anthem by the Colonial Regiment. And the invocation was by Reverend Welsh. The playing of the National Anthem was the Colonial Regiment, sung by Mrs. Lydia Curtis. If you guys are uh, listen to us on the live broadcast, we will have the text. You can send a text message to 504-259-7690. You can ask us a question or make a general comment. And we just ask you to put a name and location behind it. You know, we don't have call ID, but we'd love to give you a shout-out. And uh, that's been a... Real innocent tool, Danny, we've used in the last uh, four and a half years, and uh, we appreciate all of our fans right. uh, interacting with us during the broadcast. No doubt about it. It makes it a lot of fun. It keep, keeps it interesting for us, and uh, hopefully tonight's no different. It's going to be an exciting football game for us. We are excited to watch the Patriots come out again, Kevin. It's getting to that point in the season where you're starting to feel some of those playoff butterflies, and things are coming along, and we're playing well, and I'll tell you what. We're looking good in those red tops and those blue pants. Yeah, I was mentioning that earlier. It's the first Ooh. time we ever wore that combination. We'll talk about that good. in a second when the Patriots take the field. But this is homecoming 2018. The Patriots will take on the Holy Cross Tigers. And we are seconds away from the coin flip. They're having a, uh, a 70s reunion. Uh, it got rained out last year, so they didn't do much with them. So we invited the guys back. And they are going to be our honorary captains uh, for tonight's ball game. Sweet. Yeah. I tell you what, they showed up in support. The guys looking oh, good great. out there on the 45 yard line. Had a few guys show up, and I tell you what, they're looking good. And uh, just to let you know, it's nice to see some of those older fellas show up. I can't call them older fellas yet, right? They're not. They're not old. Nah. They're gonna come back and slap me for that. Right, it's good to see these guys out there, ready right. to rock and roll. Falls it down to Gordon and the boys behind the run through. And here come your fighting patriots of John Curtis Christian School. Woo! Taking the field on the east side of the stadium is the Holy Cross Tigers in their traditional old gold helmets, white jerseys, and blue pants. The Patriots are in their traditional white helmets. Going with the old school red jerseys with the stripes and blue pants. And that is the first time in school history we've done red top, blue bottom combinations. Looks good. We've done it here uh, back when Joe Knight was playing the uh, blue top with the red bottoms, yeah. but never this combination. And I'll tell you what, uh, the shade of blue on the pants really matches the, the shoulder stripes. It does. looks good. It looks, looks good. real, real nice. So kind of a uh, throwback to the, the guys of the 60s when Coach Rob and Coach Leon played. That's when that jersey you know, was worn. Uh, but it's so awesome with the blue. When we got the bus, I saw it. I'm like, oh, yep. that's nice. Really nice. Really nice. Love it. Homecoming night. Homecoming night. You get all kind of surprises. And for those of you who don't know out there, traditionally, that's what we wear. We wear a red top for homecoming and state championships. Of course, we've changed it up every now and then. Coach will break it out in the locker room on a big, big game. But historically, most of the time, it's during homecoming and for the state championship. And it's always nice to see those red jerseys getting broken out. 
I want to give a shout out to uh, Jeff Bonet, class of 1995, listening from the camp out in Natchez, Mississippi. And also Barry and John, they're watching from the camp up in Winfield. So we appreciate you guys. You're always the first ones to there you go. Uh, reach out every week. So we appreciate that. Yep. Again, if you're on the live broadcast, feel free to text us a question or comment, 504-259-7690. And I really can't... Where am I going? She's got to get in. All right, well, I can't speak that. The, uh, it ain't hard. I tell you what, the coach, the coaches are up here. And just so y'all know, we, Kevin and I are in the stands because uh, the, the, I think the, the press box at Must Bertolino is condemned uh, at the very top. Yeah. We sometimes went up there when the weather was treating us okay, and the coaches on both sides have lifts. And then we have the officials and some camera crew and PA in the press box, and we're kind of sitting right out in front. And uh, I'll say it again, thank goodness it's not 90 degrees. Oh, it's rainy. still not cool yet, but <laughs> it's not too hot. The Patriots will the All right, the Patriots won the toss, have elected to receive, and we'll be going left to right. So we'll get the ball first. And I kind of like it like that, Danny. Uh, this is a rare. I'm sure it's happened before, but it's been a long time. We had the ball nine times last week and scored on all nine possessions. I mean, you really, as a coach, you can't ask for any more efficiency. Of course, you want to score touchdowns every time you touch the ball. But even with our second group in there, we were scoring touchdowns. And, Kevin, that's really what I want to see tonight. I want to see our first offense go out there, kick it into gear, score some points, and get some of that depth working because you know as well as I do when the – the conditioning of the season gets to you later in the season. Injuries happen, unfortunately. You need to find out who else wants to be on the field. So you could do that in games like this. You can find out who else wants to be on the field, who's going to get on tape, who's going to learn. So tonight, hopefully, is another learning tool for us as we face the Tigers. I know they're going to be ready to come out and play, but hopefully come out here on this opening kickoff and show them who we are. All right, a couple of uh, jersey uh, numbers i got to tell you about. Uh, yep. Valentine is wearing 58, 58. again, yep. and then uh, down to Brown is going to wear 22. Ronald Poole is injured. He's out for the year, but there's no number two jersey. Couldn't find it. So it's because actually for your 30th year. Well, he he, kind of, he wanted to say, hey, I'm wearing uh, I'm in your family tree tonight. I said, yeah, I, I hear you, buddy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Joel Taylor will be the near side halfback, I mean, excuse me, the deep back for the Patriots. Corey Wren, the near side, and then Smith will be the far side halfback. We're going back to our traditional uh, return. In recent weeks, we've had to go either one deep or two deep. And, Danny, we're not really high tonight, so we're kind of in the crowd. It might be harder for us to see. We have a delayed call as far as our advantage. We won't see the numbers, but uh, number 37, Trevor uh, Termini. Yep, Termini is kicking off for the Tigers. It's going to be a squib kick. Crum mishandled it. Gets Getting it back go. up at the 20-yard line. 25-30, middle of turn. And he's going to be tackled at the 37-yard line. So good with 11.54 to go in the quarter, the Patriots will take it over first and 10. Kevin, yeah, good job with Chauncey. Chauncey just fielding it, securing the football, getting north, picking up a few extra yards, but making sure that we're, we secure the football and the Patriots have great field position to start. Looks as though we're going to be at about the 37-yard line. Yep. All right, Smith and Renner the halfback. Smith near side. Ren the left side halfback. Guggenheim under center and ball is in the middle of the field. We'll go to the left. Guggenheim hands it off to Ren. He's fighting hard for, let's call it a gain of two to the 39-yard line. Yeah, he was hit. As soon as he got the football, Colin almost actually got spun around as soon as he got it. Good job of securing it, getting a couple couple yards, fighting forward, and here we go play second down. I want to give a shout-out to Russell Bonowitz, class of 1986. Appreciate you checking in. He says, go Patriots. Second down, eight. They'll keep it in the middle of the field. Guggenheim with a little counter option. Backside, Smith has it. He's at the 50, 45-yard line. It's going to be tackled. It's probably the 44 of Holy Cross. I tell you what, Danny, if number one, uh, Chase Ruggiano doesn't make the tackle, he takes it to the house. Yeah, he sure does. Sure good. good job. Good play call right there by the Patriots. We're seeing it right here in the first couple plays, and Collins trying to get them 
changed over. Twins to the top side of the field, but nice play call and good first down. Yep, back at the 45-yard line to be exact. Guggenheim keeps it. Ducks around the left corner. Has some room, and he clears the 35 to the 33-yard line. Should be another first down for the Patriots. Good read right there by Colin. I tell you what, a lot of times it seems like Colin ducks and ducks and ducks. I used to do that a lot because I wasn't as fast as him. But sometimes I think he needs to trust his speed a little better, take it to the top of the field, see if it, see if he can outrun some of these guys. Officially, they're going to mark it to the 32-yard line, gain a 13 first and 10 Patriots, twins to the left. They keep the ball in the middle of the field. It's like... Guggenheim, option near side, gets the pitch to Wren. Trying to turn the corner, gets a block by Smith, and he's going to be shoved out of bounds near the 26-yard line. Very close to the first down. Oh, no, he came back. He came back up. Nice gain right there. Good job. I really like that play with Colin, Kevin, because, like I said, he can attack the end with some speed and get that ball out to where the running back has it with plenty of time to be able to see where he has to take his angle down the field. Officially, it is a 25-yard line. Second down and three. Gain of seven. 10-29 to go in the first period. This is the opening drive. Patriots have a two tight end set. Split near side. And the ball is on the near hash mark. Guggenheim hands it off to Smith over to center. He breaks a couple tackles. Going to fight himself to the, let's see, the 20 to 21 yard. Let's see where he spotted. First down. First down. First down, Patriots. At the 20 yard line. Gain of five. McCart kind of ran into a a host of Patriots blockers and then did a good job of fighting with some second effort, spinning off, getting a nice gain in the first down on the play, keeping the ball moving. Twins receivers to the left. They'll keep the ball on the near hash mark. Huge hole on the right side. They'll go to the left instead. Up, oh, busted play. Guggenheim keeps it. He's going to fight hard. He's going to fight near the 16-yard line. He tried to do the inside dive, but that, that back went to a pitch formation, yep. so he just kept it. Good job. And that's what you have with a with a seasoned quarterback, Kevin. Doesn't do anything crazy. Doesn't make a bad play worse. Just eat it. He fought forward for a couple yards. Good job. Going to play second down in good position right here. It's called the 17. Game of three. Second and seven. 9.38 and counting. This is the opening drive. There's no score. But the Patriots are driving. Twins to the left. Crum and Smith are the halfbacks. Guggenheim comes near side, hands it off to Smith. He's going to take oh, oh, my goodness. I spoke too soon. He was about Shoe to take to the house, and the guy tripped him up, and he felt a 10. That would have been a touchdown. Shoe string tackle, Kevin. You mentioned it. He dove back in there, and almost we almost didn't see it, except we saw his leg get pulled back so quick. But that's a first down, like you can hear Mr. Bob mm. say. So good job of us just getting first downs and being very methodical here on our first drive. First and goal from the 10. I want to give a shout out to Ryan and Stephanie Estes. They're in Gatlinburg, Tennessee right How now. Listen to us. We appreciate you. Man, these people are going to make us go on a vacation at the end know. of the year, huh? All right. Two tight ends split far out to the left. They keep the ball in the near hash mark. Guggenheim comes to the left, hands it off to Wren. No gain. Second down and goal from the 10. Kevin, we gotta we gotta we gotta talk about the offensive line a little bit. Do that all year. They've done a great job moving the pile, doing combo blocks, communicating up front. Really, going into this season, we weren't sure how this group was going to be. Over the last few weeks, I think they've grown up a lot. But really, all season long, they've done a great job of just coming together as a unit and playing really hard and physical. Yep, two tight ends split near side. Now they'll keep the ball in the near half mark. Second down goal from the ten. Guggenheim is barking out some orders. We'll come near side. He keeps it, ducks it, and he's going to fight hard for maybe one yard, be third and goal. I want to give a shout-out here. Uh, Dominic Lamb that made the tackle on that previous play, number 99. His dad, Anthony, played for the Patriots in the 90s. Sure did. Good job of him squeezing. A lot of times if those guys just stay outside, they don't squeeze down to the football, you're going to see Colin just squirt it inside, duck it, do what he's got to do. Good job of him squeezing it. Making a tackle on the play. Give a shout out to my mom and dad, Lionel and Sue Fayard and Plano. They, they love the, the red on blue combination. Yep. So do I. All right, split to the top, split near side. Guggenheim rolls to his left. Has a guy in the flat. Crum in. Oh, incomplete pass. He had Crum early, yep. but then the curl route came and brought the defender into the mix. Incomplete. So the Patriots will look to cook a field goal. It's a little tougher for us to see from where we are right here tonight. And usually we're up another 20 feet or so. 
But, yeah, you're, you're exactly right, Kevin. If he just flips it out there early, I think we got something cooking. But uh, he waited a little bit, threw it up a little high, and the uh, receiver couldn't come down with it. Well, him. I also say this, too. The receiver should have run a deeper curl route. The ball's at the nine yard line. You have to go almost to the back of the end zone, come back yep. mid to open up that flat for the running back. Yep. All right, the ball is on the uh, 17. Kick is up, and it is good. So that was a 27-yard field goal. So with 7.32 to go in the quarter, it's the Patriots 3, the Tigers 0. Kevin, for that score, I want to say thank you to Moe's Pizza, John Curtis Christian School alum, Jeff Arson, the class of 1986, and his wife, Lisa. They're located at 1112 Avenue H in West Wego. Give them a call for your special order, 341-9650. They specialize in homemade hand-tossed pizza, lasagna, meatballs, and spaghetti, muffaladas. I eat lunch there. I think it was yesterday. And got one of those sausage rolls, and woo, baby, tell you what, www.mospizzanola.com. Give them a call, 341-9650. Mo's Pizza, we appreciate your support of the Patriots. Now well, McCready drills a 27-yard field goal to make it 3-0 Patriots, but Danny, the Patriots went down the field, just got bogged down inside the goal line, but you know what, credit the Tiger defense for stepping up. Exactly right, good job by them stepping up at the very end, down deep in their red zone. But you got to have points. We got some points. Of course, we won touchdowns, but a good job by their defense stepping up there. You got a question asking if Gordon Bear is the same Gordon Bear that graduated in 1986. That is the one, the one and only. And just as good looking. Back deep for Holy Cross is number one. All right, deep for the Rosano. Tigers is Rosano. Far side is going to be Stevens. And near side, Johnson. Stevens, Rosano, Johnson, deep for the, the Tigers. The Pagers kick it off left to right. McCready with a three-step kick. Rosano from the eight-yard line looks to get a middle return, and he trips at the 15-yard drill. He just fell on his own feet. So the Tigers will have it first and 10 at their own 15 with 7.27 to go in the first quarter. More defense to see what they brought tonight. Like to see them come out on their first drive and set the tempo of the football game. And uh, like you said, it's kind of funny seeing Valentine back in that jersey and then seeing Deuce Deuce out there, Dominic Brown. And then, of course, tonight we got uh, Colin Morgan playing cornerback again. Yeah. All right, number 14 is the quarterback. That's going to be Wooten. He's going to hand it off to the running back. Short game. That's handy out the middle. I'm going to give a shout to Eddie Mendez. He and his wife are watching us from River Ridge. We appreciate you. Yep. Oh, and, uh, hey, here we go. Uh, Big Barry's asked us, how many hogs do uh, you and I want? I'll tell you what, we want as many as we want. As many as we can get. But we want to shoot them ourselves. Big Barry? Yeah. That's right. All right, here we go. We've got twins near side split to the left. Handy lines up to the right of Wooten out of the shotgun. Now it sends a fullback near side. Wooten's going to hand it off to the running back. Comes near side as a flag. He's be close to the first down. Tackled around the 25 yard line. Might be the first down. Let's see what the flag is. I think he's about a yard shot, but yeah, they got a flag at the top of the field. They're going to discuss it a little bit. <clears throat> Chop block. Holy cross. All right. And I'm moving back. 6.56 to go in the first period. This is the Tigers' first possession of the ball game, but the Patriots lead it 3-0. I know we always talk about feeling each other out offensively, seeing what the defense is doing and how they're playing, but I tell you what, that'll drive a coach nuts to be doing okay, making some nice positive yardage in the first couple plays, and then you got a chop block penalty and scoot you back. Those are tough to make up. From a vantage point in the stands, it's hard to see who the personnel is in the backfield. All right, Handy's going to stay in that running back. He'll line up to the left of Wooten. Three receiver, uh, two receivers near side, but they send the receiver in motion all the way across the formation near side, so we have trips near side. Wooten is going to hand it off to Handy, and he Number breaks three, the tackle. Handy, Short game, got it to around the 11-yard line. Big hold Third initially, long. Kevin, and then Matthew Jane did a good job of stepping up, closing it in there. But initially, I thought that was going to go for some big yardage, and number six stepped in, made a nice tackle. Yeah, Jane's had a good year this year. Yes, he's, he's, and he's not hes not really a big linebacker like you normally normally see. He's about 5'9", 188 pounds is what he's listed at. But obviously, he knows the game. He can get in there quickly and make some plays. 
All right, you got trips to the top of the field, split near side. So let's call a split trips right. Wooten calling a play, and it looks like Handy lines up to his right. Wooten takes the pass from center, steps up in the pocket, and he's in trouble, and he's going to go down. That's Ogeron. Ogeron got him around the eight-yard line. Great pressure. He had a pocket when he stepped up, and then the Patriots closed on him. Yep, did a good job. Just staying after it. That's what you got to do as a defensive lineman or linebacker. Just get after the quarterback no matter where you are. Get in your rush lanes. If he steps up, collapse to him. Good job of those guys making a play. They're going to force a punt here, obviously, on fourth down. And we're going to get the ball probably on their side of the 50 after this punt. Bruce hard to kick it. Morgan and Wren will stand at the Holy Cross 45. They almost stepped up the back of the end zone, Danny. Wobbly kick. Morgan. Morgan Fair catches it at the 36-yard line. Let's see where they officially mark it. We're going to be a little deliberate in our uh, calling because it's hard to tell. We're, we're living on the top row of the press box, yep. which is really not much higher than the field almost. Good job of him just making a fair catch, Kevin. You can't ask for any better. Getting the ball on, uh, what you call it, 36? Yeah. About the 36-yard line. Great, yes. great, great, great field position for the offense to start their second drive. Yep. Got to get seven points out of this one, Kevin. Hey, I'm going to give a shout-out to the film club from Amanda and Metry. Of course, Donald, Bubby, and Gabby, they're watching uh, from home in Harahan. We appreciate all you guys. There you go. Dr. D's crew. Yeah, ball on the left, hash marks, twin near side. Good at him. Ducks inside, has a guy wide open, Taylor down the seams, caught at the 10-5, and he's going to be dropped inside the 10-yard line, be first and goal, Patriots. Good job right there. Kevin, a lot of times this year that's been open. We have not been able to complete it. Good job stepping back, seeing where, where the coverage is, and firing that ball inside to make a nice play on that play action pass. Got it at the six. Gain of 30. Looks like we have an injured Tiger on the field. The referee don't see him. He's right in front of him on the ground. All right, now they call it. We got an injury timeout. 4.45 to go in the quarter. It's the Patriots three to Tiger zero, but the Patriots are driving. That's the thing, Kevin, is sometimes when uh, sometimes when you when you try to uh, do too much in a play, all of a sudden you're right there, you ride that dive hard, you step up and you see a guy wide open as a quarterback. Sometimes that's a tougher play or a tougher throw to make than when a guy's well covered and you just step back in and throw it. So good job of Colin completing the pass and Taylor making it happen. Yep. Go with two tight ends. That's uh, should be trips on the twins near side. Guggenheim keeps it. Fighting hard, and he's be close to the goal line. Very, very close. Second down and goal. Second, the, third, fourth down effort right there by Colin. Yep. And uh, good job of continuing to move those feet. Got a question here. Is uh, number 16 Steve McCready's son? Yes, it is. Uh, he is a backup quarterback and our kicker, place kicker and punter. He's an all-purpose guy. And actually, when he took the snap to open the game uh, the season this year, he and Steve became the first father-son combo to start a game at quarterback in Patriot history. That's right. Second down goal from the one. Two tight ends split to the left. Quarterback keepers every once and he gives it off instead to Ren. I believe he's in. Yes. Yes, sir. So with 341 to go in the quarter, it's now 9-0 Patriots on Ren's one-yard touchdown run. Good job right there. Getting the ball in the end zone. Doing exactly what we have to do, Kevin, to be successful. We always like these first couple series in the first quarter. Be able to get some points out of it. Good job. Field goal on the first drive, touchdown on the second drive. Very efficient offensively once again for the second week in a row. <laughs> Patriots line up for the PAT. Good get on the hole, McCready to kick. Snap, place, kick is up. The extra point is and it's good. So with 341 to go in the quarter, it's down. The Patriots 10, the Tigers 0. I'll tell you what, <laughs> very, very pleased with what I've seen so far because these guys have been very efficient, like I mentioned, offensively, defensively, special teams, doing exactly what we got to do. Kevin, for that scoring drive, I want to say thank you to Yaya's Comfort Food, Connor Mullins and Mr. Brian Mullins. Go check them out. 2317 Hickory Avenue in Harahan. I tell you what, it's been like a daily thing for me to go over there and get that sausage and gravy with a couple eggs on the side. 
Um, I'm sausage gravy with the biscuits, excuse me, but I'm always there all the time. So go check them out. Or we'll go give them a call, maybe to cater your next event or party. 575 3434. Hashtag just like you like it. Yaya's Comfort Food.com. So go check them out. Yaya's Comfort Food.com. Give them a call. 575 3434 2317 Hickory Avenue. Daily breakfast, lunch specials. Go check them out. Not far from school. Awesome, awesome, awesome family fair. Appreciate the support. Yeah, yeah, it's comfort food. Danny up the three play drive, went 36 yards of distance, taking 112 off the clock. Ren with a one yard touchdown run. McCready's PAT makes it 10 0. But that touchdown was set up by a 30 yard completion between Guggenheim and Taylor on the first play. McCready boots it deep. Let me field it around the four yard line. 10 15 goes far side. Dance around the middle, and a tackle. Good job. Trying to see who that was. Couldn't see the number. Number 17. Out of Patriots, that's Lance Williams. Number eight on the or number eight, Mr. Bob says. Number eight, of course, is Antonio Alexander. Kirkwood, number two, was the returner. Good job by those guys getting down there and hustling. Kevin, as a kick returner, you know just as well as I do, you can't dance around back no. there. you got to catch the ball, believe in your blocks, Get it and go. see it or don't see it, make one cut and go. Good job of the Patriots getting down there with some speed and making a play. Ball on the 14-yard line. They'll send the receiver in motion all the way near side, so we have trips near side, split to the top of the field. Andy takes the handoff, goes to his right, has some you, got room, and he's at the first down. Tackled after he gained about 13. Angelo smacked their quarterback down as soon as he didn't, uh, as soon as they handed the ball off, and the official's kind of in his ear a little bit. But, I mean, quarterback's got to protect himself, and like I said, as soon as he hands it off, you don't know if he's got the ball or not. I think it's a smart move. Yep, play with the tackle. Wooten hands it off to Andy again. Same play around the right side. This time, not so much. Jane got him. Gain of one, maybe. Not a little more than that. They yep. give him three. John Curtis Patriots band is rocking and rolling. The student section is kind of to our right, down about 25 yards from us. We got the little cheerleaders down even further. Wooten fakes the handoff, throws it far side, completes to the receiver. Along the sideline, needs to be tackled just shy of the first down marker. That's Kirkwood, number two, on the reception. I guess that's the one good thing about Mus Bertolino Stadium, Kevin, is that it looks packed as heck. You know, you got a lot of people here. and, and uh, But I tell you, it, I wouldn't be liking it too much if I was a Holy Cross Tiger. No, I don't like it here. Away from the concessions. And I played it twice, and I hated it. Yep. Third down and one, trips near side. They give it to Handy, goes around the right side, and he's going to have the first down, but not by much. Needed one, got two. Good job stepping Maybe up. Maybe one and a half, but it'll be Matthew first down. Matthew Jane, Josh Valentine, those first guys down, getting in there. But like you said, it wasn't much, wasn't far to go, and they did a good job of getting the first down. Pounding it right at us here on this drive, Kevin. They are. Well, the comp's known for physical football, so I'm not surprised. Same formation. It's time to give it to Handy. Goes around the right side again. Jane drags him out of bounds. Gain of about four. So it looks like. They found the play that works, and they keep going to it. Yep. They don't huddle up like most of the teams at Cat League. They just kind of line up, look at the sideline. Zachary Blake gets in quickly. Valentine needs a hustle off the field. He barely got off in time. Quarterback's trying the old freeze play, and then he looks back at the coach and gets the signal. Twins to the left, twins to the right. They'll stay in the shotgun. Wooten takes the pass and center. Looks near side, has an out route in his... Almost caught by one hand, and, and then if the defensive back would have gotten there, stepping too early, that would have been Brown. He could have picked it off and had a touchdown. Yeah, that's Colin Morgan, the cornerback on the coverage. Dominic Brown from inside. But you're right, Kevin. That ball kind of floated up a little bit, and he tipped it and tipped it and tipped it. But a good job of Morgan just getting to him, making a play, forcing the incompletion there. Third down six, 137 to go in the first period. The Patriots lead the Tigers 10-0. Tigers had the ball their own 41-yard line. They are going right to left. Send the receiver in motion across the formation near side. So they got double twin set. Wooten takes the pass from center. Steps up the pocket. Goes yes, down. Sir. Angelo Anderson. He walked right into Angelo. Got a huge sack for the Patriots and they'll force the punt. I'll tell you what, Zachariah Blake was right there on the opposite side as well. But Angelo got to him once again. Kevin, we've said all season long. You're not going to be able to block this guy all, all game. No. you got to double-team him. you got to figure things out. you got to run the ball away from him. 
you're not going to be able to give him a one-on-one -on -one matchup all game long. He's going to make you pay, and he did right there. Morgan and Wren. But deep, it's a high, booming kick. Fair catch taken by Morgan, and he catches it at the 20... Seven yard line with 59 seconds to go in the quarter. Tell you what, Danny, that was a nice punt. A nice punt. I think it just kept carrying and kept carrying and getting even. Morgan was camped underneath it, he thought, and he had to kind of turn his back and make it over the shoulder catch to make it happen. But a good job of him uh, signaling the fair catch. And we'll still, still end up with okay field position after a really good punt. Yeah. If you guys listen to us on the live broadcast, feel free to send us a text. You can ask us a question or make a comment to 504. 259-7690. Again, 504-259-7690. Just give us your name and location so we can give you a shout-out. We don't have a call ID. This is homecoming in 2018. We have a lovely court. We'll introduce them at halftime. And we'll probably go down memory lane with you and I with some old Why not? homecoming game memories. Ball on the left half mark. Twins near side send Williams in motion towards the line of scrimmage. Guggenheim keeps it. Has the first down and more. Dragging a couple Tigers down to the Patriot 48-yard line. <laughs> Colin, Colin hurdled. It looks like uh, number 68. That would be Robert Pizzolato. I think he was on the ground. Colin hurdled him and did a good job of just getting the ball down the field, taking care of it with two hands. And nice first down gain again for the Patriots. Gain of 21. Twins to the left. Ball in the middle of the field. Guggenheim back to pass. Looks to his left, fires Dallas, it down the middle, Dallas has the guy Taylor, and it's going to be, oh, he dove for it, got a paw on it. Not quite, but I do like the effort on both sides. I'll tell you what, good job of the Holy Cross Tigers seeing it, recognizing it a little late, but some pretty good makeup speed, and he made it a lot closer than it was when I initially saw it. Not a bad throw by Colin, only his guy could get it, but I like the effort by the receiver laying out. Danny uh, Taylor's a transfer receiver, and pretty much the beginning of the season, we didn't hear about him, but he kind of broke out against the brother Martin Crusaders at Tulane, having two catches for two touchdowns, and he's a pretty much go-to guy. We might have a break and huddle penalty. Yeah, he's a, he's, no, a good. he's a junior, Kevin, 5'9", 175 pounds, and you're right. He's done a great job for us. Williams goes in motion across the formation. We'll hand it off to the running back. That's Chauncey Crum. He's fighting hard across the 50, and he's still fighting, and he might have it to the 46-yard line of the Tigers. Let's see where he spotted. Good job keeping his forward momentum moving, pumping those strong legs and moving that pile. The offensive lineman pushing a little bit as well. It's going to bring up third down. And, uh, Game of six, third and four. Nice job of the Patriots for rotating some more guys in here. Kevin looks like we're going to bring in two tight end set. Yeah, Ren Davis and uh, uh, Stevens check in. They're going to let the clock run down in the first quarter. That's it. That's the end of the first quarter. So at the one quarter of play, it's the John Curtis Christian Patriots 10, the Holy Cross Tigers 0. Kevin, for that first quarter of action, I want to say thank you to Prep Fan Sports. Your one-stop sports shop. They're conveniently located at 70452 Highway 21 in Covington. Prep Fan Sports offers a wide variety of sporting goods, including famous brands such as Adidas, Under Armour, Easton, Wilson, Louisville Slugger, DeMarini, Rawlings, and much more. Prep Fan Sports can accommodate all of your team uniform and equipment needs or simply your individual player needs. Please call Adam or Jeff at 985-400-5552. Prep Fan Sports, we appreciate your support of the Patriots. I had a chance. It was funny. Our sponsors talking talking about prep fan sports and Yaya's. I actually met Adam Ackle for the first time at Yaya's two days ago. Nice. I got a chance to talk to him a little bit, so that was cool. So we appreciate both of you guys for helping us out here. I want to give a shout out to a class heat of mine, Jason Freeman. Listen to us in Baton Rouge. We appreciate you. And uh, happy 30th uh, homecoming anniversary, Jason. We yeah. were seniors together That's way right. back when. First quarter highlights, the Patriots got the opening drive, drove down the field, unfortunately stalled inside the 10-yard line. McCready kicked a 27-yard field goal to put the Patriots up 3-0. Then on the second possession, the Patriots went on a three-play, 36-yard drive, taking 112 off the clock. And uh, Wren took it over from one yard. McCready added a PAT, and that's where we stand, 10-0. This is the Patriots' third possession, and they have it inside Tiger territory at their 46-yard line. It's third down and four. Now the Patriots going right to left. Two tight ends split out top of the field. Guggenheim, option to the top of the field, gets it to Wren, needs a block. Can he get it? He does, and he's going to have the first down and a little more, and he's going to be tripped up around the 33-yard line. Good job of Corey just cutting it back inside. Chauncey wasn't sure if he was going to kick the guy out, hook him back in, and Corey just made a great cut at the last second, used his speed, got up the field, picked up a nice first down for us, and again, we're rotating guys in and out. 
getting two tights out. A different situation here, first and ten, and keeping some fresh legs on the field, buddy. Yep. Patriots line up with twins receivers near side. Guggenheim comes near side, pulls it, turns the corner, has a lot of room, just mauled the safety, and he's having another first down. I believe Danny, he got it to the 17-yard line. Gain of 16. I tell you what, he heard me up in the box, Kevin. He's been cutting it back, cutting it back, cutting it back. That time, he stuck his foot in the ground, acted like he was going to cut it back, and then knifed right by the safety on the upfield shoulder and did a good job picking up some, some more nice yardage before he was tripped up. 11-19 to go in the half. Clock is running. Patriots have it first and 10. At the 17-yard line of the Tigers, twins receivers near side. Guggenheim is checking off, telling the running backs what the play is. Ball's in the middle of the field. They'll go opposite to the right. Barry gets the pitch. Can he turn the corner? Has it. Has a block. And he's returning it inside the 10. Did he score? Is it? No. No. He stepped out of bounds. Ooh, it was close. It was close. And is there a flag on the play? I don't know if the, looks like the lead block hit his guy and turned back around and maybe hit him again. I wonder if they said he hit him in the back. I, I can't tell from our angle, but I'm not quite sure. It's, a it's nice something play I can speculate on. Set up again, and uh, we've seen a little bit more of him over the last few weeks. He's done a good job, Mr. Here's August Perry. No flag. No flag. I no like flag. it. Gordon, where did he spot it? Can you see? At the one. Okay. The one yard line. So be first and go at the one with 10.51 to go. Nice. Gain of 16 yard line. Oh, now they're going to take Barry out. <laughs> he gets it down there. Come on, man. Yeah, but I don't know how your quarterbacks are. I know what this play is going to be. Feed him, feed him. Yeah. Collins trying to break the quarterback record. <laughs> hey, if it's there, take it. Not like we keep those stats. Though. No. All right, Crum, the near side halfback. Smith, the far side, two tied in, split near side. Guggenheim does take it to the right. And he's in. All right, Kevin. And you got to hand it to the offensive lineman, Kevin. You can't play, you can't call plays like that if you don't trust the guys in front of you to do their diligence and block. Push that pile forward. 10.47 to go in the half. It's now 16-0. PT pending. For that scoring drive, Kevin, want to say thank you once again to Mark Bowen. Whether you're buying a new home or refinancing, Mark Bowen and Nations Lending can help you. Nations Lending offers FHA, VA, USDA loans that can even help those with 580 credit and above. Mark is a graduate, class of 1998, and has over 15 years of mortgage lending experience. He's a proud supporter of the John Curtis Patriots and can be reached at 225-573-8688, and his NMLS number is 587641. Nations Lending is an equal opportunity lender, and we appreciate your support of the Patriots. Snap plays, kick is up, and it is very good. 10.47 to go in the half. It's the Patriots 17, the Tigers 0. Well, Kevin, I say we're doing okay so far, buddy. Been very efficient, taking care of the football. Defense is getting us the ball back in pretty good field position and uh, doing what we need to do. And I want to see us get down there with some smoking shoes on this kickoff team, make another big play inside the 20. And uh, looks like so far, early in the second quarter, we've definitely sent a message up 17 to nothing. I want to Danny. say thank you once again for joining us on JohnCurtisPatriots.com, as always. And uh, go ahead, Kim. No, I was saying it was a seven-play drive, went 73 yards in distance, taking 212 off the clock. Uh, Guggenheim with a one-yard touchdown run, and McCready making his PAT. Makes it 17-0. Kevin, it, but to correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the feel of this team feels more like a brotherhood. Like, yeah. like there's a leadership or an aura around it that is – a significant bond yes. you know you're around some special teams like that where you know you guys have your back and everybody's out there working for the same goal and it seems like this year we know what it is picked it up a little bit last year's group was very good and very special and they got oh so close shoulda woulda coulda and those juniors and sophomores last year who are now seniors and juniors yes. this year said you know what we got a little taste of it because that was their first experience in the dome that's true All right, and they're like you know what not letting it go finish the job yep. that's pretty much been the mentality this year all right, 21 is going to be Stevens. Like two, Kirkwood. 
Oh. Oh. Field at the far sideline. He's at a 10-15. Comes near side. And he's in trouble. Good job, Donald and Clay. They Good smoked job. him at the 11-yard line. Danny, his mistake was trying to come laterally without pursuit. He should have been, you know, and we see this on public turns. Sometimes you're not going to make it. No. Just stick your head up and get as much as you can. Like, look, here's the thing. You're not going to score touchdowns on every kickoff return, every punt return, every carry that you make. Sometimes it's just not there. So knife forward, get what you can get, eat up a couple more yards, a positive yardage, and then let's play the next play. But sometimes guys just try to make something that's not there, and they end up, they end up shooting themselves in the foot, something negative. Yep. That's going to move the ball back to the – Oh, he's telling the, the guy on the backside. It's at the 11. But I will say this. Great job by Donald Clay. Oh, absolutely. Staying in his lane, recognizing yes. that the ball flow was coming to him and not letting him back outside. And he really made the, the play down here at the bottom. Yep. It's in the receiver in motion, top of the field. So they got twins of both sides. They got handed off to Handy. Handy has a room up the middle. Uh-oh. And he's going to have a first down. He ran over the left guard and gashes for a good run. He is down, tackled at the... Donald Clay fell back in on that tackle 29. as well. 29. But yeah, you're right, Kevin. 18 they yards. Ran that one right up the gut. Yep. They'll stay with the twins of both sides of the field. Wooten fakes the handoff, throws the far side. Going to be caught by number six. And he's dancing around the field. Probably gain of five. That's going to be Johnson. Five, maybe six yards. Let's see where they spot it. Good job of Deshaun Williams trying to chase it down. Just got to wrap up, make that tackle. You played an offense similar to this in uh, Memphis. What would you call it, a slip screen or just a little kid's pass to the receiver? Yeah, it was a slip screen or a jailbreak coming right. back inside. They'll stay in the same formation. This time they'll give it over to number three in the Patriots defense. Springing outside and got him. Deshaun Williams and Ogeron on the tackle. Handy looked like he had maybe a possible opportunity to gain some yards, but yep. credit those two Patriots there for stringing them outside and no gain. Yep, stepping up, making a big play. Third and five. They'll stay in the same formation. Wooten throws it back to uh, number six again. No gain. I'll tell you what, those, those plays to me, Kevin, those little screens coming back inside. You got to trust in your offensive lineman, and it's almost hard to be looking back into the ball and seeing that pursuit coming from the inside out. Uh, sometimes I think they either go for nothing or go for it all. Depends on if you can get that tunnel, you know, they call it a tunnel screen. Sometimes you can catch it and get right up the field with some speed, but it hasn't worked out for them so far. Bruce are back to pump for the Tigers. Morgan and Wren are going to stand around the Patriot 35-yard line. Low snap. Wobbly kick. You need to get out the way, everybody. It's going to roll out of bounds. I just took a nice little roll for Holy Cross. Let's see where they mark it. Uh, 33. Let's call it a 33. Yeah, 33. 33, thank you. Yeah, we might get a little help down there because we can't see too much. We're uh, we're in the stands. We're in the Bob Uecker seats <laughs> That's tonight. right, that's right. And Coach Tommy Farbacher ran up and got in Colin Morgan's face, obviously coaching him up, I think, about where to get on that ball position-wise, not getting in front of it because if it takes a crazy hop, it might bounce off of you and bad things may happen, but a good job of getting out of the way and continuing to uh, get us the ball in great field position once again. The defense does. And, uh, Kevin, you can't ask for anything more offensively nope. to get the ball outside of the 20 every time you touch it. I want to give a shout-out to Mike Wilson. Listen to us in River Ridge. Thank you, Mike. Oh, I saw Mike last week at the St. Matthew Fair. Nice. Ball in the near hash mark. First and 10 Patriots from the 33. We'll go to the top of the field option. Pitches it to Wren. Can he turn the corner? He does. And, oh, he got tripped up. i tell you what, Danny. If he plays in Canada, he still might be running. No doubt. If you don't know, Canada has a little bit wider field. I think he just need, yards. He needed uh, maybe two more steps to the yep. top of the field, and he might still be running. If he gets some room, he's gone. Yeah. Got it to the 42-yard line. So we second down and one, gain a nine. Keep the ball in that right hash mark, which is the far side. Dugan on back to pass. Drops back. He's going to throw it deep down his side. Has Williams. Oh, ah, overthrew him by a few yards. Just overthrew him. But I, you I, know what? On second and one, that's not a bad call, though. I'm not really quite sure. what Did we fake a dive on the inside there? Because no. Collins' drop looked a little funky. It did. Coming out, he opened. Most of the time, as a quarterback for Curtis, you're opening to the left and throwing. He kind of dropped back to the right yes. with his hips open a little bit more and just chunked it deep. Nice, nice air on the ball. 
Kyle, Kevin, I got a shout out from my old sports agent, Brian Parker. Okay. He's listening to us live on the on the, on the uh, live stream. And he nice. said, I'm digging these red jerseys and blue pants. Yeah, no joke. Were. We like them too. Well, Gary, uh, Jerry told me he was getting some heat for it. Oh. Uh, you know how some of these alums are, man. I'm like, dude, I they love them. They good, near or far. I'll tell you about that in a second. Third and one from the 42, Guggenheim. Go, uh, keeps it, and he's got it. He's to the 45-yard line. Basically, uh, a couple weeks ago, he allowed Jerry, who's in charge of the uniform, allowed the seniors to decide what they're going to wear for homecoming. And this is what they wanted to come up with collectively. And uh, they would say, hey, Coach, we never wore the, these new red jerseys with the uh, blue pants. I said, okay, let's do it. It looks sweet. And uh, I do like the combination. I like it, too. Ball's just north of the 45-yard line, but we're going to call it that. 8-15 and counting. We're in the second quarter. The Patriots lead at 17-0, but it's first and 10. Guggenheim on the center. Throws a quick hit. Far sideline. And that's Smith. And he broke quite a few tackles. And they finally run him out of bounds in Holy Cross territory. 36. And it, thank you, Gordon. 36, thank you. And if there's any alumni out there that doesn't like these jerseys, Kevin, they're more than welcome to buy the next set, right? Well, I'll tell you what. We got a surprise. <laughs> Uh-oh. We got a surprise. That's a good, good, good hanger for you fans. Uh, not next week with Shaw, but we were told there's been a group of alumni, uh, you and I included, uh, have a special uniform for the Patriots. And it'll be another first color combination in school history, but that's going to leave it at that. First and 10, Patriots, Twins, receivers near side. Will come near side. Guggenheim keeps it, ducks it up. Has a lot of room. And he's fighting hard. It's around the 22 yard line. Good job running the ball. Very, very tough. Colin Guggenheim protecting it and continuing to move those sticks with another first down for the Patriots. Danny, this is our fourth possession. I don't want to jinx us right now, but so far, three possessions, three, point, uh, three uh, scores. You add that to the nine, that's 12 for 12. If we score here, that'll be 13 consecutive drives where we put points on the board which is real impressive. First and 10 Patriots. They call it a 21 to be exact. Twins near side. Ball in that right hash mark. Guggenheim drops back to pass. Looks near side. And he fires a pass in the end zone. Caught! Yes, sir! Davis! What a deep curl route in the middle of the end zone. The Patriots now extend the lead 23-0 with 7.22 to go in the half. Good job of Colin just hanging in there. Sometimes as a quarterback, you got to take a shot and throw touchdowns, and that's what he did all day. Good job right there, 1-4, making it happen. Now I tell you, he had some serious heat coming from the backside that he did not see, and he, he stood tall in there, took a nice shot through a bullet out there into the end zone for a touchdown. Great job standing in there by a senior quarterback, and he knows you can't hold on to the ball too long. And, uh, but the offensive line just gave him enough time to let that thing rip. McCready to line up for the PAT. Yeah. Yeah. Snap. Place. Kick is up. The extra point is and good. it's good. So with 7.22 to go in the half, it's the Patriots 24, the Tigers 0. Kevin, I want to say thank you once again to Exit Realty, NOLA Premier. They're a full-service brokerage firm, residential, commercial, and leasing. They have cutting-edge tech, tech to help all buyers and sellers. They offer retirement and beneficiary benefits for all of their agents. I want to say thank you to Kel Kopecki, the broker owner, Exit Realty, NOLA Premier, 2200 Veterans Boulevard, Suite 206. Go check them out right there in Kenner. Or at the office, 298-3948. Give them a call, 298-3948. Exit Realty, NOLA Premier. We appreciate your support of the Patriots. Danny, that was a six-play drive, went 67 yards in distance, 122 off the clock. Guggenheim to Davis for 21 yards out. McCready added a PAT. It's now 24-0. And like I said a moment ago, that is now 13 consecutive drives the Patriots have put points on the board. Woo, doesn't get any better than that. I want to give a special shout out to my mom and dad right there in River Ridge listening to us here on the live stream. Thank you everybody out there for joining us on JohnCurtisPatriots.com. The old man turns 80 years old next month. What? How about that? Hey, happy belated birthday to Mr. Madden Wimprine, who won October 18th. That was yesterday. That's right. That's because right. Because it was our first year doing the broadcast, and he was born. That's exactly right. I appreciate your you numbers. bringing that up. My boy. Yep. yep. He didn't uh, want to steal your thunder, but I thought I'd you know, share that with us. And, uh, yeah, last night we had a little get-together. We're taking him fishing with Chris Abear Sunday, another nice. alumni. 
another alum, and uh, so we appreciate that, Kevin. Uh, Madden would be happy to hear that. McCready kicks it. Kirkwood feels at the far side, nine-yard line. So stay far side, has a huge hole, and he's tripped up near the 30. Y'all, line. It's called the 29. Go ahead, Danny. But, but you know what's cute? You know what's special about this school? What's that? Ashley sent me a video. She brought some cupcakes to school yesterday for them around lunchtime. And she sent the video. And it was it was, it was was like the whole cafeteria was singing him happy birthday. And they all nice. knew him. And they all made him feel special. And that's what's so great about growing up with a school like this. Yes. You feel part of the family. Absolutely. You know? And uh, made him feel special. I appreciate that. All right. Twins to the top of the field. Twins near side. Wooten throws it near side. Caught by Kirkwood. And he's going to be wrangled down shortly after the catch. He actually lost two yards. He danced around and gave yep. up two yards. So I tell you what, good job by Jordan Stipes recognizing it and trying to run to it. He slipped down initially, but a good job once he made the catch to attack. That's, that, that's one thing with these DBs, Kevin. They know that they have help coming from inside out. So attack his outside shoulder and get to him. But a good job by him getting to the uh, receiver to try to make a play. Gain of four, second and six, 6.43 and counting. They'll stay with the same formation. Twins at the top, twins on the near side. Wooten fakes the handoff, in trouble. Gets it off in time and incomplete. But I tell you what, credit the pass rush by Valentine and Angelo. Yep. Good Anderson. job of him just getting rid of it, Kevin. Yes. That was a tough one. Boy, and he's already been sacked twice with those guys. Well, and for a right handed quarterback to try to evade the rush and run back to his left, that's tough. So a good job of him just getting rid of it and uh, not taking a sack. Yeah, I want to give a shout-out to uh, Amanda and Wendy. They're uh, Madison's mom and grandma that listen to us. And okay, mom and okay. grandma, guess what? Madison's doing a great job filming for us tonight. Sure Wooten is. Steps out of the pocket and goes one. Sir! Big loss. Big loss. Oh, the second time tonight where a pocket has been formed and Wooten steps up into it, but unfortunately for him, he steps up into the sack. Making it happen. Good job, defensive line. Ogeron coming coming through in a big way. Good job. And Kevin, he is a senior, six foot six. They got him listed at 255 pounds. I, I think that he's a little bit bigger than that, but a good job of him making a big play when we needed him to. Rand and Morgan are going to stand back around the Patriot 40 yard line. He's going to play offensive tackle or guard at Tulane, where he's committed to. Rand's going to pick it up at the 35 yard line. Has a middle return. Comes near side. Got a block. One man to beat. Can we beat the punter? He does. Wren goes right to 65 yards for the touchdown. Great job. 5.40 to go in the half. It's now Patriots 30, Tigers 0. And, Danny, that's our first punt return in a long time. You know what? Since the quarterfinal game in 15 at St. Paul when Taz Bickham took it back. Awesome, awesome, awesome that's job, Kevin. Been. I was just about to say, as soon as he picked it up, great job of him recognizing it. The type of balls that bounce that you can pick up and then the ones to get away from. You play the ball, don't let the ball play you. Right. Good job of him playing the ball, picking it up on the nice easy hop, getting it vertical, picking up some nice blocks down the field. Clifford did a good job. Oh, and we're gonna we're gonna do a huddle huddle. Here we go. Two for two. Version. But a good Maybe. job of him picking up the blocks, using his speed. Clifford did a good job of him escorting him to the end zone by the nice kick by the ki uh, kick out block by the kicker there. But I tell you what, very very exciting. Good fireworks here in the first half, and that puts us up 30 to nothing here in the second quarter. They get 32 with the two-point try. What did they call it, no? Uh, no, they, they waved it off. Said we went motion. You know. Of course they would. I, I, th <laughs> I think officials, a lot of times, they're just not ready for that. Right. So when it happens, they think something's got to be wrong, or we're not set, or somebody was moving. Um, same thing when we do that that little screen, uh, yeah. excuse me, on the punt. Yes. We kind of hide the guys sometimes yes. in the sidelines. They throw a flag because they don't know what's going on. Something's got to be wrong if you could make it happen. Yeah, yeah I never want to be the one to tell Coach JT what he, need, what he needs to do, but because they don't see that too often, maybe before the game, hey, we have this play. You may want to be alert for well, it. Well, what I've heard is that they have. Oh, oh, he blocked it. Blocked it. That's not good. It came right the middle, and that's Lamb swatted it. But it's still the Pages 30, Tigers 0. What I've heard back, Kevin, is that they actually have talked about it and discussed it, and the officials have said, we're going to call the flag on you. And they ask for a reason, and they say, well, because they have to check in, well, in, the, in the numbers. Well, I'm talking about the, the swinging gate. Oh, the muddle huddle yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. But uh, you would think these officials, uh -huh. after calling these many games, right. Curtis football, that they would have seen this every time we line up for an extra point. They know what's going on. But I tell you what, great job, good efficiency by the Patriots. Offense, defense, special teams. These guys are hitting on all cylinders tonight. Playing one heck of a team, uh, one heck of a team effort right there by the Patriots. So good, good, good job, Kevin. These guys on the Patriots team look like they working out. And they must be working out at Anytime Fitness. Sponsored by the owners, Damon Lepper, class of 97, and Janice Toops Lepper, class of 01. Anytime Fitness, go check them out at 5200 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie. Give them a call at 218-4814. They're offering 24-7 access to over 4,000 clubs worldwide, health plan discounts, tanning, cardio equipment, strength training, free weights, circuit equipment, personal training, small group classes, TRX training systems, and functional training as well. Mention the Patriot Nation and you're gonna during sign up and you're gonna receive half off enrollment and 10% off the monthly rate. And that's for the Metairie location only. So go check them out at 5200 Veterans Boulevard. Anytime anytime fitness, we appreciate your support of the Patriots. Ren with a 65 yard punt return untouched for the touchdown. PT was blocked. Patriots 30, Tiger zero. You gotta count it, it's a possession. That's now 14 consecutive possessions. Pagers had put points on the board. Tell you what, I almost couldn't talk. I was so jacked up <laughs> from that return. Do we just haven't seen it in so long, Kevin? Wow. Good November job of those 15. guys believing it. Yep. I gotta have a return on the far sideline. That's Kirkwood. Let's see, they're gonna mark him at the 18 yard line. And a good job again by the kickoff team getting down there and making a play inside the 20. People don't understand. You've been there before, playing on the team. When you have a special teams touchdown, it electrifies. And I'm not talking about when you're up 24 no, no, to no. nothing or whatever. It electrifies the football team. It ignites everybody. Offense, defensively, the momentum specifically changes in your direction right there. And you got to make something happen. Good job by those guys. Go back to the 2012 team, third game of the year, second game of the year. In the Superdome against Plant. Yep. How about the long pump return to set up this first touchdown? That's right. And it was a beat down after that. First and ten, Tigers fakes the runoff. Wooten has the guy down the middle of the scene. They're going to throw it to me. Oh, oh. it's intercepted. Stipe had it in and out of his hands. Good job. I tell you what, looked like the receiver had us beat a little bit. Not a great throw. Almost threw it behind him, but Stipe did a good job of making it up, getting to it. And the receiver almost had to play defender on that one. And, uh, Good job right there by the defense once again. Second down, 10 Tigers. That's the officially the 17-yard line. I misspoke earlier. I thought it was the 18, and they must have moved it back. 5.23 to go in the half. Patriots 30, Tigers 0. They send a motion receiver near side. Trips near side now. Single receiver top of the field. They'll hand the ball off to Handy up the middle. And he's going to get it close to the 25-yard line. Dan, he's... By far in this game, their best athlete so far. Oh, no doubt about it. He's got some good wiggle. Gets down there, runs with a full head of steam. Very explosive over the ball. Does a good, does a good job of running between the tackles. Third and three, gain of seven. I think Holy Cross will call a timeout, and they do. So with 5 0 1 to go in the half, timeout Tigers. It's the Patriots 30 to Tigers 0. Our defense has just been stellar, Kevin. You know, all over the field. Defensive line, outside linebackers, inside linebackers, DBs. These guys have done a great job of just playing as a team unit, playing defensive football, getting after the quarterback, staying in their lanes. They're just doing every, everything. Like I mentioned a few minutes ago, we're just playing team football right now, and it's nice to see that at this point in the season, we're gelling together. We really look like a lead football team, some a team that really believes in each other. And not a team that's peaking. Right. Because you don't want to peak too soon. But I still think there's room for a lot of growth. There is. And yep. guess what? We got the Roman Raiders next Saturday. If there's ever a time where we can just keep this momentum going and just continue to play Patriot football, it's coming at a good time. And we won't mind that at all, will we? No. <laughs> the Raiders. Uh, you know, we have to get our boy Gare on the air uh, at halftime. Oh, that'd be great. Can he, can he wear a little JC hat? Can we get him up in the booth with a little JC hat? Uh, I can hear it now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 baby. They don't get any better than this, baby. Oh, baby, baby. Wooten back to pass. So the near side has the receiver. Oh, oh. wide open in the flat. He dropped it. That's number 11, a big tight end seminary. He wouldn't have gotten the first down, but. Nope. Oh, could have made something happen. Yeah. So with four. Actually, you know what? He would have. That would have been third. I'm looking at the wrong stick. Yep. He would have had the first down, but yeah. now with 455 to go in half, they got to punt it again, and that's bad news for the Tigers. Yes, Kevin, that was only third and three. 
and it's kind of like when some things are going wrong, everything goes wrong, and the quarterback puts a nice ball on him and just can't can't come up with the completion. They're short a guy. They got that spread punt. They're missing a personal protector. They're going to need one because we can block it. They might want to call a timeout. They're short a player. Now they're going to run them on. They got seven seconds. Let's see. Four seconds. They may have delayed the game. Oh, they barely get it off. Yep. Broussard, rugby styles. Wow, nice kick. Wren. Got to get away from it. He should have caught it, but he lets it roll, and yep. it's going to stop at the 35-yard line. Well, the ball play us that time. Yes. But I tell you, the way he punts it, Kevin, it almost looks like the ball keeps carrying and keeps carrying. Yes. Just kind of a sidewinder. Yep. It almost looks like the ball floats up in the air a little bit. Not really used to what you're seeing with that spiral action coming straight down at you. Yep. But a uh, good job of getting out of the way, nonetheless, and it's going to bring up First and 10. First and 10 with 442 left. Patriots on top, 30 to nothing. Thank you for joining us once again on JohnCurtisPatriots.com. Let's see if we keep our streak going. 14 consecutive drives dating back to last Saturday and the opening drive against St. Augustine. It's been every time we get the ball, we punch it in. Yep. All right, split twins near side. Single back out of the shotgun. Wren is the lone running back. Holy Cross is probably going, what is this? High snap. Guggenheim's going to keep it. Running right up the middle. And he has plenty of room. Has the first down of Moore. Far sideline. He's breaking tackles. Running over guys. Got it to the Tiger 39-yard line. Now, we saw that single back last week. But not out of the shotgun. Good job right there, Kevin. Not exactly sure what the design play call was. But a good job of Colin catching it, getting north. Well, it's quarterback draw all the and, way. And uh, you think so? Yeah. And a good job by him just getting it and going. And uh, that's what that's what you can do with an athletic quarterback. You know, put the ball in his hands, let him make plays. People don't understand, as a Patriot, when you have a quarterback that can run like this, it's a three-back backfield every play. How about this? Double twin set. Send uh, Smith the motion all the way to the near side. Guggenheim steps up into the pocket, fakes out a guy. He's going to run it. And he's pulling his way for nine yards. Almost had the first down on his own. He ran over that linebacker. Yep. Almost don't like to see him get his hands on the ball too much. Let's see, he might have the first down. Or, or, or should I say get hit too much. He does. Yeah, he looks like he's got it, Kevin. At the sticks. I th and he did a good job of stepping up and keeping his eyes downfield. And uh, Chauncey Crum's going to check into the game. Corey Wren's going to march off. But a good job of Colin picking up the first down. Everybody was covered. Did what he had to do. 342 in county. First and 10 Patriots from the Tiger 29 yard line. Same formation, double twins. We'll stay in the shotgun. Crumb lines up to the right of Guggenheim. Guggenheim looks his right, throws it far side, caught by Davis. 18 again. Wrangled out of bounds. Want to give a shout out to fellow Patriot and current Mississippi State Bulldog. Cody Schechnader. He is the punter and holder for the Bulldogs. Of course, they have a big game with the Tigers tomorrow night. He knew I I joke with him all the time about this being a Tiger fan. I said, "Look, I want you when you you know you drop a snap or a shank a punt. I do it in jazz. I really love him. I, yeah, I, want, I want to do it. Hey, Cody, you know I love you, buddy. Yeah, have fun tomorrow. Good yes, luck sir. to you, but I still want the Tigers to have win. Have a great game. Yeah, yeah, have a great game. I like still like to give him a little hard time. Hey, how about this? I'll kick your coverage and just let him return. It. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Guggenheim back to pass. Looks near side, and he's gonna Guggenheim is the back for a loss. Go down. Kevin, I got a uh, Go ahead. got a shout out from uh, Tammy Eng Englander, and uh, she said this is from Christy and Remy, Coach Christy and Remy. Yes. Remy and uh, Coach Christy are flying to Fort Lauderdale for softball, but we'll be watching the game in the air. In the air. Nice. Awesome that we can do this. How, how cool is it that? Is. Watching the game on a plane. And I want to say thank you to Remy. She came over this week, Kevin, yes. and braided Finley's hair. <laughs> for crazy hair day. You needed that. And let me tell you something. I was in dire need because my wife was out of town. But I really appreciate that, Remy. Uh, uh, it didn't take long for Finley to adore you. Draw play. Crum. Um, fighting yeah, hard. Man. And he might be close to the first down. Let's see where he spot him. Yeah, we got it. Gordon, where's the spot at? The 18 or 19? 18. Got it. Thank you. First and 10. And I want to thank Remy also and along with uh, uh, Reagan Fahbacher, uh, two two weeks or last week at the, uh, the pink volleyball game. All the girls played in honor of uh, somebody who had passed away for cancer or somebody who's currently uh, fighting cancer. And my wife passed away uh, 11 months ago. And uh, 
both uh, Remy and, and, uh, and uh, Reagan played in Lori's Honor, so I appreciate them. Oh, it's very sweet. Yeah, and a real nice car they wrote, so I appreciate that. Very, their very nice. Generous. Yep. Ball in the middle of the field. Guggenheim going to hand it off to Crum. Right over the center. Fighting hard inside the 10. He's at a 5. Get He's there, get there, get oh. there. Yes. Nice job. He refused to go down. That's it. Two That's minutes to go in the half. It's now 36 0. That's how you got to run the football, Kevin. With bad intentions. And every time Chauncey touches the ball, it looks like he's trying to hurt somebody. And a good job of him taking care of the ball and getting that thing in the end zone. It's fun to watch him play as well. We've been watching some of these guys, Kevin, since they were in eighth grade because yeah. we heard about that mysterious eighth grade team that was whipping every Catholic team's butt yep. back in the day by 50, 50 to nothing. And uh, some of these guys are now juniors, and uh, Chauncey's part of that class. And it's good to see those guys getting the ball in the end zone once again. Big E. Big E's out there. Going to kick it. Low snap, kicks up, and it is good. The Big E puts an extra point on the board. It's now the Patriots 37, the Tigers 0. How about that? He kicked Kevin, real last week. I'll tell you what, he does a great job. Just straight, straight toe booter. And for that score, I want to say thank you once again to John Curtis Christian School alum, Jeff Osmond, class of 1986, and his wife, Lisa. They're located at 1112 Avenue H in West Wego, Moe's Pizza. Give them a call, 341-9650. They specialize in homemade hand-tossed pizzas, lasagna, meatballs, and spaghetti, and muffaladas. I just went there this week, got one of those sausage rolls with a little dipping sauce, and ooh, baby, let me tell you. Visit the website, www.moespizzanola.com, 341-9650-1112 Avenue H in West Wego, Moe's Pizza. We appreciate your support of the Patriots. 37 to nothing with two minutes left in the second quarter. You're listening to us live on JohnCurtisPatriots.com, and we appreciate you doing so. I'll tell you what, it's a good-looking crowd out here tonight, Kevin. Great-looking crowd. A lot of people showed up in support. We even have some bleachers in the, in the end zone uh, to the right of us, and Holy Cross, of course, high, obviously has the uh, the kitty section. The visitors uh, loaded up over there with the with – the, uh, it looks like those those bleachers are about six tall. But, uh, you know, we're at Musk Berlino Stadium. We're making the best of it. And uh, I know the Patriots are making the best of it on the field right now. Danny, that was a six-play drive, went 65 yards of distance, 242 off the clock. Crum right, with an 18-yard touchdown run. Right, Big E right, added right. A, uh, the, the PET, makes it 37-0, and that makes it 15 consecutive possessions with points scored. And out of that, it is 13 touchdowns and two field goals Yep. to keep him scored home. Kirkwood inside the five, 10-15. And reverses field. He might have got tackled around the 16 yard line. Let's see where he's at. Did he say 13? I said 13, 16. Originally 13, he was at the 16, I believe. Well, I'll tell you what. Great job by yes. the kickoff coverage tonight, Kevin. You really got to hand it to these guys. I think Holy Cross is dancing a little bit too much on a kickoff return. You got to get that thing and get north, like we said before. But a good job on our kickoff team having a relentless pursuit, getting up the field, hair on fire. Running down there with a full head of steam and making it happen. That's how they moved it back around the 15 yard line. Trips near side. They're going to throw it near side. Tight end wide open. Yep. That's seminary. Oh, keep your head up, boys. That's close for made a tackle, but he put his head down, and that's not what you want to do because that could cause serious injury. I tell you what, to himself. Just a little stick play right over the middle of the field, Kevin. If you believe in a tight end, if you have a tight end that you trust, it's almost hard to cover that play. If he could do a good job of reading the linebackers and strong safety and bouncing in or out, right or left, it's very, very hard to cover that. Good completion right there for the Tigers. I want to give a shout-out to Malcolm Ogeron. Listen to us out on Bro Briz. Appreciate you. Trips to the top of the field. They're going to hand it off to Handy up the middle. Oh, he got hit hard. Jane smoked him. <laughs> Matthew was, Jane and Barfield. He was about to make a move to the left, and Jane had none of it. He said, you know what, I'm tired of chasing him. He just... Stoned him. Bippity boppity boop. Some of that. 110 and counting. No huddle. Same formations. Twins to the left, twins to the right. Wooten looks near side, throws it. Caught. And receiver breaks a couple tackles. And he's finally tackled on a 45 yard line. That's Kirkwood on the reception. That'll be a first down. We're under a minute, 57 seconds. Clock stops just to move the chains. Yep. When the ball is put in play and the chains are set, they'll start it up again. And they do right now. Now we'll send Kirkwood in motion top of the field. So they got twins at the top. 
one split near side. Wooten fakes the handoff. He's in trouble. Breaks, ah. breaks the tackle by Zachary Blake. Barfield giving chase, and the quarterback goes down at the Patriot 49-yard line. Probably yeah. a smart move in his side. Well, the clock continues to run, though. That's the only thing. 33 seconds and counting. They have two timeouts. Didn't get the first down. I really thought their coach was going to call, call a timeout as soon as he slid. But well, they move it midfield. I say he gave, his, he gave himself up at midfield, so yeah. at the 50. Second down, five. Oh, come and on the now. And jumped off sides. You got to oh, be kidding key. Me. Come on now. Oh, key. I know they're getting excited. It's halftime. You only got a few seconds left. You know they're going to probably throw the ball so you're licking your chops, but come on, ball key. And unfortunately, that's a free first down now. So guess what? When you jump off sides, you're gone. You get replaced quickly. Talking about my dad earlier, Kevin. He's turning 80 this year. He that's boarded awesome. at Holy Cross in fourth grade. Yeah. In the good old days. I got a good did you know. It's uh, Curtis and Holy Cross related. I'm going to say it at halftime. Ooh, I bet you do. Well, and it's personal related as well. I'm involved with it. Snap by Wooten. Steps up in the get pocket. To him, get to him. Get to him. Oh, he got hit as he threw it. Ah. And it's caught on the far sideline. Nice throw. Yep. Number six, Johnson. And that's going to be around the Patriot 25-yard line, I believe. Let's see. Good job of getting the ball down the field, pushing it. No, around the 20. The 20. 20. Thanks, Gordon. Sometimes, I'll tell you what, that quarterback just sits in there, sits in there. I thought we were going to get to him, and we couldn't. All right, 11 seconds to go in the quarter. Trying to get Big E off the line, off the field, and they're going to call a timeout. They, they say Big E. So 11 seconds to go in the half. Timeout, Tigers. It'll be first and 10 from the Patriots, 22 when they come back, but the Patriots lead at 37-0. Tell you what, Kevin, for that timeout, I want to give a shout-out to Plum Street Snowballs. We'll check them out at the Uptown location at 1300 Burdett Street in New Orleans. Metro locations in inside Laughing Year Park at the concession stand by the splash pad. And come visit right now the annual pumpkin patch. Check them out. Give Tony Curtis a call for your special group raid or field trip. And go see all the pumpkins, take pictures, bring the family. Buy all you want. Get something to snack on at the concession stand. But for the best sweet treat in the business, give Tony a call for your next party event, 256-3298. That's 256-3298. Plum Street Snowballs, we appreciate your support of Patriots. You know what I like about this? And I'm glad uh, Thomas Dean invited the alumni band. Actually, oh, cool. uh, Greg Garcia, I think, actually did it. Uh, is it Greg or David Garcia? David Garcia. I think it's David, yeah. David, I'm sorry. Uh, we got a couple alums came back and they go play with the band at halftime. So that, that's a nice cool little tradition they started a couple years ago. Yeah, David, I'm sorry, David Garcia. That's neat. First down, first down and 10, Holy Cross. All right, first and 10 Tigers from the Patriots 22, 11 seconds to go in the half. Let's see if the Patriots can hold them out of the end zone here. Wooten takes the pass from center, looks near side, has a guy open as we go oh, in and out of hands. I almost oh. said complete. I mean, literally, it was on his hips. Yeah, right there. He took his hand off. It is a flag. Second Personal foul, yeah. roughing the quarterback. Ah, oh, come on now. Be smart. So that'll be 15 yards. I'll tell you what, though. Good job of the quarterback the throwing down. the ball out on time, Kevin. And uh, the receiver really turned, and the ball was there. I think it jumped up on him in a hurry. Uh, but a good job of the quarterback as he's getting hit, delivering a nice ball. Incomplete, but we roughed the passer. Jeez. Yeah, here seconds. I, this got to be the last Jeez. play of the half, I would assume. We hope so. Hope they Brandon keep Wilcox that zero. Checks in. Hope they keep that zero on the scoreboard. I agree. Automatic first down for Holy Cross. All right, the ball's at the 11. It's going to mark it half the distance to the goal. So at the 11, first and 10 with eight seconds to go. Come on, get after the quarterback. Wins to the left, wins to the right. Candy is a lone runner back to the right of Wooten. Checking back with their coach on the sideline. A little feet freeze yeah. playing. They're going to call timeout. Yeah, so they'll call the last timeout. So with eight seconds to go and a half, timeout Tigers. The Patriots 37, Tigers 0. Kevin, you know as well as I do, sometimes the quarterback really isn't out there calling plays at all. No, right. You know, he's not really even looking at much until the coach calls the play from the sidelines. Right there, the coach is trying the old freeze play, seeing if we react, if we're bringing a blitz, if the safeties are going to move calls timeout and based on what he saw he's probably going to call his play. Talking about that, that real quick, it being a Curtis quarterback how we handle it compared to other schools you just said it a lot of times you spread offense but we actually call our own plays at times. It drove me nuts when I went from playing high school to go to the University of Memphis and of course no knock on them but when you grow up in a school that runs the same plays and everybody's on the same page you know what you're doing so as a Curtis quarterback depending on alignment like I said, football is a game of alignment, inches and angles, where guys are coming from, a numbers game on one side of the ball or the other. But we assess the field and put ourselves in the best play call situation as a quarterback. The coaches on the other side take that responsibility away. 
There we go. First and ten from the 11. Wooten takes a pass from center, looks to his left, throws it in, and it's all intercepted. Go. At the go. goal line. Go. Go. And he might take it to this, though. He stepped out of bounds. Morgan picked it off and returned it to the Patriot 30-yard line and ran out the clock, and that's it. Good job. So after one half of play, it's a John Curtis Christian Patriots 37. The Holy Cross Tigers, zero. Woo, good job. Tell you what, <laughs> couldn't end any better. You and I wanted to keep that goose egg on the board, and we did just that. But, Kevin, of course, anytime we got halftime, got to give a shout-out to our premier <laughs> halftime sponsor. That's our boy, Dr. D, Fabacher Health Direct Primary Care. They got monthly, quarterly, yearly payments, in-house pharmacy with discounted meds for members, discounted labs, imaging, x-rays, and ultrasounds. $50 a month, perfect for employers that can't afford expensive insurance premiums. Same day appointments, it always makes you feel right at home. I can't tell you how many times we've called them at 9 o'clock in the morning and said the kids woke up sick, and all of a sudden we're in there at 10 o'clock seeing a doctor. So we appreciate that. That makes you feel right at home. Go see Dr. D at 8231 Jefferson Highway right there in Harahan. Give him a call at 504 336 4400. Or go ch check out now. They have their ideal protein protocol. Do uh, Donald's wife, Nicole, is in charge of that. Check it out. Losing weight isn't easy, but they try to make it simple with ideal protein protocol. Bob Barker Health Direct Primary Care. It's like having a doctor in the family. Here's the first half highlights, and it's been all Patriots. The Patriots got the ball to start the ball game. We're on an 11-play drive, but stalled inside the 10-yard line, and we end up kicking a field goal from 27 yards out. McCready made it 3-0. to zero. Then with 3.41 to go in the quarter, after a three-play 36-yard drive, taking 112 off the clock, Corey Wren had a one-yard touchdown run. McCready added a PAT and then made it Patriots 10, Tigers 0, and that's how the first quarter ended. Then with 10.47 uh, to go in the half, the Patriots got back on the board. Guggenheim had a one-yard touchdown run. McCready added a PAT, making it 17-0. That capped off a seven-play 73-yard drive, taking 2.12 off the clock. 7.22 to go in the half. It was uh, Guggenheim to Davis on a 21-yard pitch and catch. McCready added a PAT, making it 24-0. That capped off a six-play 67-yard drive, taking 1.22 off the clock. Uh, with 5.40 to go in the half, Wren had a 65-yard pump return untouched. Uh, unfortunately, the Patriots, uh, the, excuse me, the Tigers blocked the PAT, and the score stood at 30 to zero. And then, with uh, two minutes to go in the half, Chauncey Crum had an 18-yard touchdown run. Big E came in, piles off the PAT, making it 37-0, which we stand at halftime. And Danny, that capped off a six-play, 65-yard drive, taking 2:42 off the clock. And, and that added, if, again, if you go back to the St. All game, we were nine possessions, nine scores last week. We were perfect six of six. So we have 15 consecutive drives. And we said at pregame, we've been playing some good ball in recent weeks, and we're going to need to do that against a very much improved Holy Cross team. And, Danny, you can't be more pleased than what the Patriots are doing. Kevin, what else can you ask for, buddy? I mean, scoring on all the drives. The defense is getting us the ball back. You got a you got a touchdown on special teams, which we haven't had in forever. These guys are playing some football, and this is the brand of football that you and I played, the brand of football that we grew up watching, and the brand of football we appreciate as former Patriots. I'll tell you what, out of that 15 consecutive drives, 13 touchdowns, two field goals. Can't get any better than that. And the Patriots are having their halftime festivities. Hey, Kevin, want to read off Do that, tonight's please. homecoming court. Really proud of these girls, Kevin, because obviously they're all very involved. They are all uh, very worthy. And this is voted upon by the student body. So it's very nice for you to be recognized because obviously you're a very beautiful girl. But more importantly, you're beautiful on the inside. You give back. You're involved in events at school. And everybody obviously respects you at school, likes you, enjoy, enjoys the fact that that uh, that you're there and you're doing great things. So we appreciate these girls. I want to say congratulations to the 2018 2018 homecoming court. And um, starting off, I tell you what, this brings back memories. Starting off, the first person that I see on this list is Anna Curtis. And yeah, we remember when Anna was born. I mean, going back, Jeff was the quarterback, and. And Tony was the homecoming queen. And, uh, you know, and that was like one of my first, I think it was probably my second year at Curtis. And uh, and her mom won the court. 
So uh, Anna Curtis, while wow, she's growing up, she's in ninth grade. Of course, Gabby, Gabrielle Boudreaux, on the, the other ninth grader. So uh, Gabby, of course, her mom and dad are heavily involved in the school and uh, and their family. And the Boudreaux, you can't go far without seeing them. So really, really cool. And uh, Danielle Tax. And uh, <laughs> you're saying these names and you're just seeing how... You know, the, I, we, we always talk about the legacy of football or the legacy of guys that have played sports and then the grandfathers and the fathers and, and then now the sons. Well, now we have some of the daughters and the granddaughters, you know, and you're starting to see that, that third generation step up, up as well. Tenth grader, Trinity Mitchell. Eleventh grade, Tanaja Williams. I hope I'm pronouncing that, that right. Tanaja Williams. Eleventh grade as well, Hannah Brignac. Senior. Zamaya Price, and of course, senior Jenna Doyle. So I uh, want to say thank you to these girls, and, and like I always mention, Kevin, thank you to the parents to keep these girls involved. They bring them to all these events. They keep them involved. And uh, yeah, you got to be pretty darn happy and proud if you're a dad out there walking your daughter down the court. That'll be you in a few years, to be honest with you. Boy, you got a question. Uh, Doug, Doug Gilly. Uh, Asked us if uh, didn't uh, we score in the last possession against Jesuit? And I was kind of thinking that. Let's look back at my notes. I showed against Jesuit, we scored with like 6:42 to go in the, in the game. And I don't think Jesuit they, they ran out the clock. But I don't think they ran out the last six minutes. So I think we had one more possession and we had a punt. Not back. sure. Yeah, yeah. But I can ask Jeff to go back and uh, double check. But I don't think so. But but if so, that'd be pretty cool. Just Going another back to the Jesuit, that'd be another 16. But yep. I know for sure 15 consecutive. But I want to say we had one more possession and then we turn it over. I think. Uh, and that, but that's a. Uh, I kind of thought the same thing. Uh, yeah, Doug Gillier over there, and of course his uh, wife Marissa is a math teacher in high school, and he's talking about the family. Uh, Cody sent us another text. He said, you know, you and I talk about relationships and and uh, playing. One of his biggest memories, if you remember, his uh, older or twin brother uh, Kyle was the quarterback at Holy Cross, and just a couple years ago, this was the Holy Curtis game. You know, this uh, yeah, the section on the side half the game on the Curtis side, half the game on the um, Holy Cross side, and. Uh, that he played against him in both football and baseball, and that was a interesting uh, brother combination, if you will, fight, you know, playing against each other. But uh, now Kyle, though he's a student at LSU, is actually uh, help coaching here with the Patriots. Yep. Uh, I got another shout out. Right, uh, Glenn, Glenn Tapman said, Danny, give a shout out to Rick Trusty. He's a quarterback of 73 Patriots yes. team, and he's listening in Mississippi. We want to yes. say thank you, Rick. And uh, one of the early guys as well, uh, checking it out. And, you know, we're giving thanks to these 70 guys out here tonight, of course, as these girls are walking down. I tell you what, Jeff did a great job of getting out into the locker room and changing into a suit with two minutes left to go before halftime. Looking good down there, big boy. And my mom sent a text. She said, I remember when Weldon walked Ashley out on the field for homecoming. And uh, great, great memory for me. Uh, my wife was in the homecoming court as, as a ninth grader all the way through. And then uh, after I graduated, she was at the actual homecoming queen her senior year. So uh, still a queen in my heart, big boy. Well, I can see where the kids get their looks from. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> you know I'm going to hear that from your mom at church on Sunday, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I know Miss Barbara. Danny's a good guy, too. He's a baby. They, they didn't get any blue eyes, Ma. I know. <laughs> Still introducing. All right, we've got a few uh, did you knows we'll cover real quick. All right, so did you know? So you were you were just weeks old. You were born in '81. That's when I started, Curtis. And there was a football show on Monday night before the Monday night football game. And uh, Ken Berthlot, you may know him. He was yep. longtime voice of the Wave. Matter of fact, he is getting inducted into the Tulane uh, Green Wave Hall of Fame this weekend. He is a Holy Cross alum. But he did a story on John Curtis, not just the varsity, but the grade school program. Interviewed some, uh, you know, a couple of varsity guys, an eighth grader, seventh grader, sixth grader. And I was the fifth grader at the interview. So I was only in Curtis for three weeks. And I got interviewed by uh, Ken Berthlot uh, about, you know, what it mean to play in Coach AT's, you know, grade school program and so on and so forth. And, and uh, it was pretty cool. And to get, get to see myself on TV on the little clip. Of course, the, the clip was only maybe three minutes long. But uh, got a chance to see back then. So that's a, a personal Curtis Holy Cross, did you know, from 1981. That's cool. That's when cool. When I first started. Yeah. But I tell you what, it doesn't matter how old you are. 
when you get in front of a camera, the more you get in front of it, the better you become. And it comes with experience. I got a quick story. So All right. they sent home chocolates with us two weeks ago from school. Go sell around the neighborhood. So I got in the golf cart, riding with Baylor. Ashley Madden and Finley came and met us. And uh, I said, Baylor, you walk up to the door, you ring the doorbell. You say, hi, I'm Baylor Wimpron. And I'm here to sell some chocolates for my school, John Curtis Christian School. And he said, okay. So he got out, and this guy answered the door. And he kind of just stood there and looked at him. <laughs> and the guy looked at me, and I said, he's selling some chocolates for school. He wants to know if you want to buy some. And he bought some. Baylor walked back. He goes, I got a little shy. I said, you know what? That's okay. You're going to get better. I said, but the next one, let's try it again. My boy walked up to the door, answered the door. Hi, I'm Baylor. I want to I want to sell you some chocolates from my school, John Curtis. And I said, my man. Nice. <laughs> nice. So it comes with experience, man. So, You're right. Yeah, you, it was it's some good, good memories over here. Here's some, uh, so I was thinking a few more did you know? I said the Patriots lead the all-time series versus the Tigers five games to zero, beating the Tigers last uh, year, 37-15. Since 2015, when the Patriots joined the Catholic League, the Patriots are 16 and three versus Catholic League teams. Since 1989, the Patriots are 53 and 10. And if you really want to go go back to 1964 when we lost to Rummel, 26-0, we're now 53 and 11. Along with Lexi Dufour. Here's the homecoming queen announcement. Jenna Doyle. Jenna Doyle is the 2018 homecoming queen. All right. Congratulations to her and the, the whole court. What a bunch of lovely ladies. I'll tell you what, Preston cleans up nice. Looking good in that, in that suit, big boy. Congratulations to her. And to everybody you name, real quick, why don't you just run their names one more time? Yeah, Anna Curtis, Gabrielle Boudreaux, Danielle Tax, Trinity Mitchell, Tanaja Williams. Hannah Brignac, Zamaya Price, and Jenna Doyle, this year's 2018 Homecoming Queen. Congratulations. And if you guys, uh, I mentioned the, the pregame, but a refresher. Coming into tonight's ballgame, Coach JT's record is 576, 64 and 6. 576 wins, 64 losses, 6 ties. He has to get the 621 to tie Coach McKissick at number 622 will make him the all-time winningest football coach in the history of the sport, no matter what level. How about that? All right, we've got eight minutes to go. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, you and I go down memory lane. Uh, homecoming games that you participated in, what do you remember? Well, uh, I remember that you're down there trying to listen to your coach. And most of the time when you're playing a homecoming game, it's usually a team that, let's just say, well, at least when we played, it's not probably going to be a very good game. Historically, if you're a smart team, you don't schedule. Let's just put it this way. You don't schedule the Patriots to play your homecoming game. You schedule a team where you want it to be a happy night. You want to whip up on somebody and be fun. So I remember being there trying to listen to Coach, kind of listen a little bit, peeking, peeking through him a little bit, trying to look at the homecoming court and who's walking and who's doing what. Because like I said, my, my eventual wife was out there on the homecoming court. We pretty much dated all throughout high school. But uh, just good memories, man. Putting on the red jerseys. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. You walk in the locker room, you got your red jersey hanging. You know how big of a tradition it is at Curtis. And then all of a sudden, you got the court out here. Everybody's dressed up. Everybody looks beautiful. And then, of course, the next night, you're going out there to the homecoming dance. So it really doesn't get any better when you're in high school to be out here and to have this tradition. What about you? Uh, fortunately, you could say went 4-0 uh, during the high school games. Uh, homecoming. Uh, probably the better statistically. My senior year, 30 years ago uh, this year, in uh, 88. We played on a Thursday night against uh, Butcher of uh, the district game at East Jefferson and uh, had a personal best uh, five catches. Usually uh, my personal best before was three. But usually it was, if I got one or two, we were good because we didn't yeah, throw the ball at all. But I got I five at that. Yeah, five for 57 yards and a touchdown. So that was a personal best one. The catch, not the yards or the touchdown, but the, the number of catches. I'm like, wow. You know, you're going to throw it to me five times, I'm going to catch it. I was about to say, <laughs> five, five touches, yeah. even five throws to a Curtis receiver is yeah. really, really good. So, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, but we had a good night. We beat Lodger 27-7. And then, of course, went on to win uh, state championship number 10. And, of course, I'll bring that. Some more trivia as we go into the playoffs uh, with that as well. 
Well, I'm not as good as you. All I can't right. remember all this stuff. All right. This guy's got the memory. But you had better stats than me, though. But I know that we were 4-0 in homecoming games also. I don't know who we played, don't know who it was, but some poor soul out there yeah. got beat up on because you and I are both 4-0 in homecoming. That's awesome. You know what would be a trivia quote? We'd, we'd probably have to go look. Would be, um, when was the last time we lost a homecoming game? Hmm. You know what I'd probably say? Probably 1974. We went 3-3-3. Three, three, and three. Huh. Maybe. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. That'd be interesting stat. When did we, we lose one? I got a shut-up from our boy Brad Guthrie. He said 1996 we played Booker T. And he said we won, but the seniors had a meeting after the game because we didn't didn't beat them as bad as we should have. You know, sometimes you need that, Kevin. You need, yeah. you need to eat a little humble pie and kind of get a gut check and understand that maybe you need to work a little harder. You got to do what you got to do, or some people aren't pulling their weight or not doing what they need to do. What they need to do. But I tell you, 96 team, heck of a football team as well, and they went on to be eventual champions also that year. So, Brad, appreciate you checking in, buddy. I want to give a shout out to Chris English. He's watching from Lake Ozark, Missouri. Says go Patriots. Thank you, Chris. Ooh, Lake Ozark. That's a pretty place. I want to give uh, Jeff Bonet is uh, checking back in. Says hey, uh, his homecoming. Did you know Danny's sister-in-law Brandy was his secret cheerleader? Uh, remember the cheerleaders had uh, give gifts out to. And I'll talk about. That. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, football, senior football players would get a secret gift. From an honest cheerleader, and you had to guess them at the that's right. rod. And if you guess wrong, you get a pie in the face. But that's if you right. guess right, you get the pie. So well, Brandy's in. Uh, Brandy's in Abu Dhabi this weekend with her husband. Nice. Staying in a staying in a palace. <laughs> so she's she's doing all right. Hey, want to give a shout out to uh, Yvonne Bergeron. She listened to us quite regularly. Class of '71. She was a cheerleader in '69 and '70, and on the homecoming court '68, '69, and '70. She loves her Patriots and. Uh, we do, too, and we appreciate you, Yvonne, for being a loyal listener on the broadcast. I believe you are, you're up in Mississippi, I believe, is where you're living. Columbia, yeah, there it is, Columbia, Mississippi. Um, so let's go back, yeah, 30 years ago, uh, my senior year. We played on a Thursday, so it was a short week, and I had no clue who my cheerleader was, and I was nervous. But the day before, on Wednesday, I just happened to see, right before school started, the way – when to be my secret cheerleader, Shannon Friesewick. The way she got out of the car and she saw me, and she kind of like her body, and she's like, oh, and she quickly gave a, like, a being, being a gift to another cheerleader because that's what they do with a hand off. Uh -huh. Had she not done it, and I not saw her, you wouldn't know. I would, I, it, but it didn't really tell me. I was kind of like, so when I got the mic at the pep rally, I really had no clue, and I was like, and all of a sudden I flap, I said, uh, Shannon Friesewick, and it was her. And I'm like, oh my god, thank goodness, because <laughs> if she not giving away her body language, I'd have been pied. I'd imagine you're a pretty good body language reader over the years. Comes with experience. <laughs> <laughs> My boy. Oh, I love this guy. All right, here we go. Let's, let's keep it professional. <laughs> we got about three minutes left here at halftime. I want to say thank you for joining us once again, JohnCurtisPatriots.com. But Kevin and I are going down memory lane a little bit. And uh, you know, like I said, man, it's just cool to be out here. Nice Friday night. They got the homecoming dance tomorrow. Where, where is the homecoming dance, you know? I don't. Got to find out. But uh, usually it's not too far. No. We had a really nice spot. And uh, But, uh, you know, as far as the game goes, it doesn't get any better. We're winning 37 to nothing right now on top of the Holy Cross Tigers. And uh, <clears throat> really, really good football game thus far. On it. Yep, the Patriots are in the uh, south end zone. Again, if you just join us on JohnCurtisPatriots.com, the Patriots are wearing... The old school red jerseys with the blue stripes and then blue pants. First time we wore that combination. Yep. All right, let's look ahead. Really good. Next Saturday, 2 o'clock, we're at Joe Yenny. The Patriots will take on the Rumble Raiders. Rumble plays Brother Martin. Now, Brother Martin lost at quarterback last week when he lost to Holy Cross 7-3. He broke his ankle. Yeah. No disrespect to the backup quarterback for Brother Martin, but that you know how it is, man. Your, your big toe goes down and it hurts. I think Rumble's going to handle Brother Martin, which would be awesome because guess what? We'll be 4-0. They'll be 4-0, and that is pretty much going to be for the Catholic Championship. So if you're in the area, show up to Joe Yenny Stadium, 2 o'clock, where the Patriots take on the Raiders. The Raiders. I tell you, I hate to say this, but they say it's a pretty darn bad break, too, Kevin. Like it. Like surgery type? Yeah, he went one way and his ankle mm. went the other way kind of thing is what I heard this week from some, some yeah, Crusader fans. That. But uh, yeah, we hate to hear that. But, you know, Kevin, that's why 
We talk about it all the time in games. You have to have depth at every position. That's why you train so hard in the offseason. That's why you want to get bigger, faster, stronger, more intelligent. You want to have a football IQ that goes up and up every year. You learn the game because when your time is called, just like their backup quarterbacks, got to get in there and do what he's got to do. You got to be able to make it happen. And like I mentioned before the game, in a season like this, in a long season, injuries are bound to happen. It doesn't, yeah. you know, they're going to happen all around the field. Hopefully it doesn't happen to a key guy like the quarterback, unfortunately for Brother Martin. But like you said, Kevin, we're going to get everybody's best ball. Next week, we're going to play Roman. We're going to get their best ball. Those guys are going to go out there, try to beat us just like everybody else does every week. Luckily for us, we're playing our best ball right now that, that we have throughout the season. But if there's ever a team in the league that we can win, beat, beat, Catholic champions, perfect. Let it be the Roman Raiders. Why not? They undefeated, not? we're undefeated. We've always wanted Just to play them. Yeah. You and I would have given our left arm to be able to yeah. play them back when we played. I actually, I actually played them in a the jamboree twice, twice yeah. and uh, worked out all right for us. But it was only like a 30-minute game. It was one of those like yeah, abbreviated games. But uh, a lot of fun, man. You kind of grow up with some of those guys and be able to see them and match up with them and you know play at the park. I, you know, little Madden and Baylor are playing at Little Farms yeah. these days, six- and seven-year-olds, and you don't know how many of those guys they're going to meet up with on the next level as they get into high school and where they're, where those kids are going to go. So it's just a lot of fun to be able to play around and play some area schools because when you and I played, well, the district that you guys played in was... River Parish. Yeah, uh, which was a great district. Roger St. James District. Oh, right. very good. All right. But, oh, very good. But my point is, y'all probably didn't grow up with a lot of those kids. No. You know, and, and for us... When I played in the district, it was the inner city school, so we didn't do that either. But now, in the Catholic League, you know, it's pretty neat. Yeah, Holy Cross is just taking the field. What's up, Dick? How are you, man? Good to see you, buddy. Appreciate and here come the Patriots. They take the field. Couldn't really hear the mic kind of going in and out, but Coach JT saying the kickoff team, don't overplay the return. Get down there and just play fast, play physical. And, and Good get to see after you, buddy. It, uh, so, yeah, in last-minute instructions for the uh, defense, Coach Ross will get the ball to start the second half. Appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, I want to give a shout-out. Uh, I meant to do it in the first half. got sidetracked. The moose is loose in Metairie. <laughs> Mr. Earl Ostrecker, Sr., he was a little under the weather. Actually, he spent a little time in the hospital this week. So, oh, uh, come on now. But uh, Getting better? Oh, yeah, he's, he's good to go. Good. Had to go to a, uh, a birthday party for his, one of his grandkids uh, to today. And uh, his uh, daughter, Tracy, told me, oh, yeah, he said, look, if I can't bring my laptop, I ain't going to the party. Right. So he brought his laptop. So, Mr. Earl, we appreciate you, and I'm glad you're doing better this week. Yes, sir, no doubt about it. Want to give... Give a shout out to uh, Joe Gustin. He's checking in from Oregon, class of '79, and uh, he's definitely enjoying listening to the band. We appreciate you. Hey, thanks for checking in. Yeah, '79. Yeah, I'm starting to get some guys. Hey, yeah, look, some of those guys from the '70s checking in. Yeah, any other alums that are listening to us? You know, maybe been long time listeners, but first time checking in. Send us a text: 504-259-7690. Give us your name. And uh, your class, and if there's any activities you're involved in, whether it be band or any kind of athletics or key club or fellowship Christian athletes, whatever it was, give us a shout. Yep. I want to give you a little shout and uh, let people know it's not just, you know, since the championship era that we actually had students in the 60s. <laughs> That's right. That's right. right. Start off at 13. Looks like everybody's ready to start this. All right, the page is kicking off coming. right to left. McCready, will McCready would do it. It's going to be a deep kick, far side, and almost out of bounds. The guy catches on the solid, and he stepped down. He, he dead step out of bounds. Oh, my what goodness. What is the official doing? The official didn't he didn't mark him out That's until he kind of just stopped. He actually bailed McCready out because the ball was going out of bounds, but he yeah. caught it, and then he stepped out of bounds at the 10. Yeah, that's that's one of those same thing. Wow. You play the ball and let the ball play you. Kevin, if it's within a yard of the sideline, most of the time if it's not too high, you let it kind of bounce and see where it's going to take you. But, of course, it's a live ball. So even if you know you're getting close, you got to kind of field that thing on the side of your body and hit it with a full head of steam. But his left foot, like you said, stepped out, and uh, good thing for us. They get the ball on their 10. Yep. First and 10, Holy Cross. They'll send a receiving motion all the way near side. So we have trips near side, split out top of the field. 
Wooten's going to hand it off to Handy. Comes near side. That's been a big play. Has a lot of room, but it's a flag. Probably a holding. Handy with a big run, but we have a flag on that play. Good Valentine with a tackle. Valentine falling back in on it, chasing him down. Valentine on the stop. Maybe it's on us. But we're going to see uh, the penalty here. You would think it would be holding where it was thrown, but the way uh, Holy Cross is motioning, it looks like it might be against the Patriots. Yeah, they have not signaled it yet. Maybe not. It is. Okay, it is. Cost them five yards. And it's holding. Holding. Hold on, the Patriots. We didn't do a good job of that. Wow. We didn't hold anybody. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's five from the end of the run. Yeah. So now it's to the 31-yard line. So first and 10 Tigers, 11.40 to go in the third quarter. Clock's run. This is the opening drive of the second half. Two receivers to the top and to the bottom of the field. They're going to hand it off to Hand again. This time, and he goes down. Nice Angelo. Job. They forgot to block him. He tackled him for a loss of five at least. Angelo Anderson doing a good job getting back there and making a huge tackle. Huge stop right there. <laughs> Danny, we say they can't block him one-on-one, -on -one, but can you imagine what he does, what he can do when they don't block him at all? When you don't block him at all? Hey, it's going to be it's gonna be havoc. <laughs> wow. Loss of five. It is second down 15. Back to the 30 or 27-yard line, excuse me. Wooten looks far side, throws it, and has a receiver open at the at the sticks, and he's going to end up losing a yard. It's only a gain of four. Johnson. All right, here's a did you know since we're here at Bernalino. The very first time that we ever played here. You know when that happened? Mm, I would, let me guess. Let me guess here. The very first, first time, time we ever played here at Must Bernalino Stadium. Uh, 91. Nope. 30 years ago, my senior year, 1988, week three Ooh. against Forche in the rain. Yeah, I tell you what, you got some. This guy's breaking out all the did you know. Then we tonight. came back here in week, week six and played St. Bernard. Yep. I knew you were part Bruton, of that tradition. There's an air sign. It's almost oh. intercepted. Nice break on the ball Late right flag. there. flag. Oh, my goodness. Did we rough the quarterback again? I sure hope not. Well, the quarterback just got up, so it looks like it's going to be personal foul on us. Sure is. Second Goodness one of the night. Gracious. Cannot wow. have it. We cannot have it. Hey, that would have been fourth down and forcing a punt. Now it extends the Goodness. drive. Automatic first down. Ah, can't do silly things like that, Kevin. Like you said, just extends drives. We don't get the ball back. And, of course, we got to protect that goose egg that's on the clock. 37 to nothing mm. right now. we got to be able to protect it and do what we need to do. And defensively, it doesn't start by making these, having these silly penalties. Goes from the 31 to now the 46. So it's first and 10 Tigers. 10-34 to go in the third. Yes, yeah, so we played uh, Forche in week three. It was a rainy game. And then uh, week six, the week after we lost to uh, Covington in a monsoon. And week five, we came back here and beat St. Bernard. Handling. I was a captain for that game. Wooten's going to fake the handoff, throws it to the big tight end seminary. Cross over to 50 as we tackle the Patriot 49 yard line. Could be second down at about four. 10 20 in county. <laughs> Brian Parker checked back in and said, I lived in Chateau on 1200 Vintage, played football, baseball, and hoops for Muspertolino. Nice. Bringing back the old memories here. All right. Trips to the left, split out. The tight end comes near side. They're going to say in that shotgun. Hand it off to Handy. Goes to the left side. Has a lot of room. First down. That's a face mask. Whoa, oh, whoa, my goodness. Whoa. Big E just slam it down the face mask. That's an obvious 15. So, tell you what, that's going to be – that's 30 yard – no, uh, that would be 30, uh, 35 yards total on this drive. We give enough free and penalties. Wow. Brian, give me some of that must, must Berlino mojo because we need it right now. We're not looking too good on this drive. And what it was – he just happened to stick his hand out, and, and the running back ran right by, and he just caught him by the face mask. <laughs> he did a good job of cranking him down with it, too, though. Oh, I know. You feel it. You got to let it go. Well, but his big, saw his big old fat finger. He might have stuck that, in the face that mask. That big right? mitt. You can't oh, feel anything, huh? Nah. <laughs> so, look, we're giving him 35 yards of free real estate. Give me now old Ronnie, down to the 26. Give me old Ronnie Renatza bear claw. Woo. I wouldn't want to be on that. <laughs> Trips to the left, split near side. They're going to give it to... Handy comes near side and he's going to be thrown out of bounds. Maybe a face mask on them. I think he put oh, the face mask. I was about to say. Come in on our now. hand. All right, I got. It. Let's see what happens. And there's another late flag. If any of the these back. are on us, we I just need to take all of our guys off the field and put 11 new red shirts on the field because there's another face mask on us or them. On us. 
What the heck Final is play. going on? Well, I saw their guy. Yeah, the I saw back, that too. Not the stiff hand, but you can't put the, the hand like he did in we, their face. We must have brought him down with the face mask. Let's see. No, Here's they the changed eye. it. On them? Yeah, see, oh, okay. that's, that's, that's what I saw. <laughs> Kevin knew it, but then I saw a flag late, so I didn't know I did something too. else happened. Yeah, I thought, I thought we all thought it was on us. Yeah. Well, well no. Gracious. No, I, well, I saw he, he did a stiff arm, but he stuck it in the guy's face. You can't do that no more. And that brings the ball all the way back to the Do you know the name of the stadium before it was Muspertalino? This place? Yeah. No, but I know across the street the playground was Holly Heights. Playground, but I don't know what they called this. Is it Holly Heights Stadium? You got it. No, I wasn't even thinking of the stadium. I was just thinking well, it was the on the other subdivision on the other side. You knew it. Well, well, I'll tell you what. Well, I'll tell you. Here's another. This did guy. you know? This guy. Hang time, Mr. Whipper. I'm going to tell you oh, about it. You're going to learn me, boy. I'm going to tell you about Kevin versus Holly Heights. <laughs> you weren't even born yet. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, that pushes them back to the 37. <laughs> They called time. They, they had a receiver walk out the field, and the quarterback was calling for You the know ball. what I want to know about? Timeout. Kevin versus Holly Heights. You're going to find out in one on, second. Man. Timeout, Talk Tigers, 9.39 to go in the third. It's the Patriots, 37, the Tigers, zero. All right, let's go back uh, November 1979. I'm playing at Harahan, a 7-8 year old team, and we came in second in our league. But you know, some of these playgrounds are getting against other playgrounds and playing a uh, yep. bowl game or whatever. So we actually came here uh, to Holly Heights to play against Susan Park beat them and in the following week when we had our jamboree with if you call it or bowl game whatever played holly heights scott camino was on that team as was mark gambino who ended up being in my first class when i was in fifth grade and uh and we're losing seven six now i scored i scored a touchdown now in that year i scored 28 of my team's 29 touchdowns i was legit i was a natural athlete at eight and still are yeah that's what they say. <laughs> so uh, we we win winning seven to six. We end up going backwards, you know, some holding calls or whatever. Time's running out. We're about a minute or so in the game. It's third and thirty-five from our five-yard line. Little student body left around the left sideline. Hit that like quarter in. He gone ninety-five yards for the winner. For the winner. Oh yeah. Winner won a chicken dinner. And Kevin Fayard's buying. Got the got the extra point. We won thirteen-six. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And but Scott Gamina was on that team. Yep, Oof. sure was. They hand it off to I'm sorry. Andy, that's okay. Short game, near side. So my boys, last week, Hit me. played in their championship game. Yeah, how'd they go? Okay. So they tied 6-6, six to six, unfortunately. But the great thing is, my boy Madden, their kid breaks it for 40 yards. They're running down the field. Madden's chasing them. Everybody else on the field is just standing there. And Madden lays out and catches them on the one-yard line to stop them. Nice. And we end up tying 6-6. Six to six. Wooten throws it far side. Caught by Johnson. But great job there. By who's that defender? Jashawn Williams on yep. the tackle. Oh, Holly Heights days, huh? Yeah. How about that? Bring them back the old memories. If they kept stats, I guarantee I ran for over 2,000 yards that year. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I love it. I love All right, Wooten. Throws it back far side. Johnson catches it, a little slip screen. And he's going to be tackled after a short game. After his ball's on the ground, they're going to call him down. And it looks like Dominic Brown, 22 on the tackle. This will be fourth down along with 8.30 and counting. They'll probably go for it here. Brian said, Malcolm Ogeron checked in. We were childhood friends. My family moved to Memphis when I was 13. And I don't think I've seen him since we moved Gambino and, Ga- and Gamina. Rode my bus to school every day. Yeah. <clears throat> Some old Kenner boys, huh? You know it. How about that. Fourth down and 17. Well, Mark ended up leaving Curtis, and uh, he ended up graduating from uh, St. Stanislaus in uh, Bay St. Louis, and then Gamina graduated from Curtis and went on to play at Mississippi State. Yep. Good, good, good player. Yep. Fourth down and long. Oh, there and right. And they move back. It's going to be fourth down longer. It was fourth and 17 to make it fourth and 22. Left guard backed up a little too early. Yep, and they're going to put their punt team on the field. Yep. I said, no, it's over with. All right, so Bruce ought to come in. We're going to send uh, Morgan. It would be best probably if we just play punt safe. But we're going to send two guys back. Clay will go back with them. Yep. And this is one of those times, Kevin. They got a flag on the field. Sure I guess. Did. I don't know if they moved it back yet or not. I don't think they did. But they uh, – I think low down the punt team's come back off. They're going to throw the offense back there. Yeah, I was about to say, this is one of those times where you want to try to get after the ball and try to block it. But they probably are going to put their offense back on the field. I don't know why you – why you would uh, – why you would punt it. Probably one of our better crowds, better looking crowds we have this year. Yeah, sure is. Sure is. Usually we see the top of people's heads, but we're one within the crowd tonight. Been looking down? Yeah. Looking down on them? But we're one with the people now. We're, That's right. We're actually on the top row in the, in the crowd. 
Yeah. You're a man of the people. By the people and for the people. Hey. You know that? Number four, I always heard that about the, the voice. <laughs> That's why people talk to you so much. <laughs> Morgan, he played back. Sad thing is I could talk the horns off a goat. They may be like, oh, man, I shouldn't ask him a question. <laughs> God will shut up. Hey, Gerald Mitchell is a teammate of mine. He's in Slidell. Asked us to keep up the good work. He was on that 87 team. Really good running back. You want to talk about somebody who was smoother than Tennessee Whiskey running ball? That was him. Morgan Fair catches it at the eight-yard line. So the Patriots will have it first and ten with 7.45 to go in the third. Good it's always job. good to hear back from old teammates that have listened to us. Of course. It's nice to hear from some old guys. and Like I mentioned, haven't seen them in so long, but I tell you what, if you just mention them, it brings back the memories and uh, think of some specific things and a heck of a lot of fun actually, seeing some guys out here. I miss Judd. That's actually the six-yard line. Again, we're having a little difficulty where we're kind of low in the stand, so it's hard to see where the yard line is, so I'll trust the scoreboard. I think we got a 94-yard driver in this, Danny. Oh, I think we do. Good good on the center. It's probably the only driver to start as Wren gets the pitch. Wren, turns the corner. And he breaks one tackle. He's going to be gone. Might have to drive in one play. 94 yards. He is gone. Yep. Not going to get him. Wow. One guy touched him. No flags. And that's it. Unbelievable. Wren takes it to the house around the left corner with 725 to go in the third. It's now 43-0 Patriots. Whew, he can fly. <laughs> you know, they Always ran a, fun to they watch were, They run. ran a couple seconds uh, afterwards. So it's technically a 20-second yard drive, but that took less than that. Oh, yeah. Whew, and that's why he won the indoor hey. track meet as an eighth grader. 16 consecutive possessions with a, with a point. How about that? We got a little bit of celebration, and then we're going to run our extra point team on the, on the field, and we're going to give a shout out to one of our sponsors. We appreciate all of you guys that helped us out this year on JohnCurtisPatriots.com. I couldn't do it without you, so we appreciate you. But we are up 43 to nothing with 7:25 left, and awaiting the extra point here from Big E. All right, Taylor the hold. Big E. Kick, snap, place, kick is up. It is and it's good. no good, so we missed it. So with 725 to go in the third, it's now the Patriots 43 to Tiger 0. Kevin, for that scoring job, I want to say thank you once again to Prep, Prep Fan Sports. Prep Fan Sports is your one stop sports shop. They're conveniently located at 70452 Highway 21 in Covington. Prep Fan Sports offers a wide variety of sporting goods, including famous brands such as Adidas, Under Armour, Easton, Wilson, Louisville Slugger, D Marina, Rawlings, and much more. Prep Fan Sports can accommodate all of your team uniform and equipment needs or simply your individual player needs. Please call Prep Fan Sports and ask for Adam or Jeff at 985 400 5552 for all your sporting good needs. Go Patriots. Prep Fan Sports, we appreciate your support. One play, 94 yards in distance because they kept the clock running for a few extra seconds. Probably some mercy time. It's 20 seconds, but it took less than that. Corey Wren with the touchdown and Big E's extra point, no good. It's the Patriots 43, Tiger 0, so we'll probably have a lot of backups in the game from this point forward. And uh, Brian said, you know who else was on the bus? Who that? Collins' dad, Rodney Guggenheim. Oh, he saw Corey Wren run. He said that was Reggie Dupar. But. Uh, you know what? I think Corey Wren would like that assessment. I'm sure Reggie was a little bit bigger, but Corey's oh, yeah. probably, probably a little faster. bit faster. Yeah. Either way, true Patriots and both great players. Yep. McCready hammers it deep. Kirkward from the one-yard line. I wasn't quite sure if they're gonna let him. Go I didn't it. either. Look like he was almost in the end zone. I, said, I don't know if he was sure about it or not. He looked like he kind of hesitated a step or two. But uh, they're gonna mark him at the 27-yard line. Good job getting down there. Number nope, four, 18 yard. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go Chauncey Crum, 18-yard line. I'm not used to sitting this low. You usually, so high up. You get to look at the you field. Usually, see everything really good from a great angle, but tonight we're a little, a little bit more level. All right, they hand it off to Handy. Goes off the left side. That's a lot of running room. 
Ball comes loose, but goes out of bounds. I tell you what, I, I, we gotta watch our cornerback. He just put his head down, but I don't like the way we put our head down. That's cause for injury. Yep. Coaches are on it on the sidelines. They told him. Okay, yeah, good. They, they telling him right now. That's what it's all about. I mean, you're gonna hurt yourself. Yep. You know? Yep. No, no, no. There's an injured uh, Tiger on the far sideline. So injury timeout with 7:04 to go in the third. It's the Patriots 43, Tiger zero. All right, so if things go to plan. They haven't been going to plan so far this year in regards to a special uniform. So we want you guys to pay attention when we play Shaw on Friday, November 2nd at Tulane. And that's all I'm going to say. There'll be, there should be a new uniform for the Patriots. Should have had it a few weeks ago. That's it, huh? That's all I'm going to say. That's all you're going to say? For this week. Okay, I'll spill the beans. Ne- next week, I'm on. Yeah, a little more of a cliffhanger. Oh, there you go. Next week, let them know. Yeah, yeah. Well, not totally. You yeah, know. keep him interested. Yep. Boom. Beats a pass. Far sideline. Has a lot of running room. And that's Johnson. And he's going to get it around the Holy Cross 47-yard line. That'd be a first down. Yeah, good 637 job. to go in the third. Holy Cross moving the sticks. We got some second-string guys in there. But they're doing a good job. Quarterback did a good job of getting the ball out of his hands quickly. And the receiver turning it up, getting vertical, and picking up some nice yards on the play. And for those of you who don't know, then in high school, mm. when you get a first down, the clock temporarily stops until they set the chains for play, and then the official blows it ready again, and they start the clock. And they got a, an injured ties to receiver injured, Johnson. Injured he's tiger. down. Yep. That's why we have an injury timeout. I think what else we could say here real quick? Huh? We should come up with something. Hey, how about this? The last time we were here was the season opener of the 2000. 16 season against Landy Walker, oh. and we had a two and a half hour lightning delay. Yeah, had that pregame for two and a half hours plus Ooh. the game. We had a five hour, eight minute broadcast. Yeah, that was that's that was unforgettable for sure. We were dry mouth. Oh serious. goodness, that was rough, dude. I'm telling you, I, I kept asking Kevin, I'm like, you want to go on a break? Want to stop for a little while? He's like, no, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. And it just kept going. Another lightning delay. Then we're like, ah, we're good. No, we'll keep going. Another lightning delay. We were like, what? is going on here. Finally, we got the ball game underway, and it took forever. Hey, we had enough field space, enough information. Running back, Handy comes near side. Brace oh, that's tackles. holding. They I got it. to say. Goodness they gracious. We run them out of bounds, but they're going to call holding. <clears throat> Brendan Wilcox, they were holding the heck out of him. Good job. They called it, obviously. Number 29, Kerry McMillan also ran him out of bounds. So back Tell you up. What, Kerry. Going third. Kerry's a big, tall kid, Kevin. He's six foot four, 170 170-pound sophomore. So if he can get another 20, 30 pounds on his frame in the next couple years, he'll be one of those Clarence LeBlanc, Eddie Bibbins-type safeties. Long, rangy kid. <clears throat> hey, we'll give a shout-out to our pregame sponsors, Bill and Walt Sanchez. They can't make the 70s reunion tomorrow, but they enjoy listening to the broadcast. Patriots are going to get called with too many guys on the field. Completed pass on the far sideline, number 83. Has a little room and wow, another late flag. He Back threw that one 40 yards. Sure yeah. did. He ought to sign him up for the Olympics in a javelin. Holding on in Henley Cross. We'll see what is this flag. But we also had too many guys on the field here, also. Yep. Definitely had that. All right, let's see. If they have if they have two flags against them and one on us, the way I look at it, those one against them and, and us to cancel and they should have the third one. All right, is that how it works? <laughs> What's the other one? This should be a third flag. Offset. So get that, get that offset. Might have been the same thing. But if there was a third flag, but what was this holding? What was this flag over here? This guy in the back judge threw a flag 40 yards. No idea. So you had holding here, too many guys by us here. Yeah. But there's a flag on the far side. He called holding. Did too. he wave it off? Okay. On them? I mean us? So then if that's the case, then that flag should be enforced because these two negated itself. And that's two in Holy Cross. And it does. So there you go. Re- re- replaying it down? Well, they no. move the ball back from the spot. Yeah, it's okay. a first down, but it goes from the spot. Yep. So now the ball's at the 40-yard line. But they have to get it to the Patriot 44 for the first down. Oh, that, that, move, that, guard, that guard moved. Came out of a stance too early. Come on now. Let's not get in a sloppy second half. We want this thing to breeze through. Up 43 to nothing. 5.38 to go in the ballgame. 
Yeah, go back to Walt and Bill Sanchez. They were twin brothers on the first state championship team in 75. And the original sponsors. Yep. And back in 2013, we appreciate all their support. And uh, Bill Sanchez is the one who drew the uh, Coach Rob uh, Yogi Bear logo back in the day. And he takes the handoff, short That's game, great. maybe one. Great job. Brendan Wilcox down here at the bottom. Kevin came off the edge, fell in there and made the tackle. Nice play by him. Kevin, want to give a shout-out to Bob Euster Productions as well. Robbie up here in the booth with us all the time. Give him a call, 738-1447. For all your edited or anything you need filmed, 738-1447. I give it the hand again, break double tackles. Nice spin move. Woo! <laughs> Ran, got ran into hammered. a brick wall right there number by number eight. eight, Antonio Alexander. Antonio, I heard he likes to hit and look like there. it on that one. And Antonio is a, I think they call him Tony. He's 5'10", 185-pound junior. Kind of look like uh, Clarence LeBlanc back in the day. Yeah. 429 and counting. Wooten takes the pass to center, throws it far side. Caught by Johnson. He's running backwards. Patriots give him pursuit. Got a little speed. Yeah, Did a good a job of turning the corner. I think it's going to be fourth down and eight. Gained about five. Of course, he ran 35 to get five. I really thought we were going to get him from the backside. Did a good job of turning them, using his speed and getting out there to the corner. Number four, Broussard will come. So they'll punt it now. Fourth down and seven. It'll be fourth and seven. Yep. 4-14 to go. And I think we'll see the second unit of an offense on the field. If we can get another returner out here. That's old rugby style. And it's going to take a Patriot bounce. Get away from it. There we go. At the 29. Oh, and they throw a late flag. I mean, that was late, 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 way from the corner over there. And I think maybe, Kevin, one of our guys pushed somebody in the back. But when I tell you it was five seconds later that he threw the flag, I mean, if you see it, you can throw a flag. Just throw a flag. But I think one of our guys kind of pushed somebody in the back to let them roll a little bit. But uh, I don't know. We'll see what they call. But anyway, we got the ball back with three minutes and 59 seconds left here in the third quarter. And it's been all Patriots up 43 to nothing. Yeah, that'll back us up to what yard line. Illegal participation against the Patriots. They'll bring the ball back. Illegal participation. Too many guys on the field. Yeah, I just, I didn't, I didn't see that. Come on, how, how could that happen when we get the defense? No, we didn't, no we didn't idea. Throw nobody out there. Does that give them a first down? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure that does. Only cross a first down. Mm. I mean, how do we do that? We got to communicate on the sideline better. Kids need to listen up. Do what we need to do. Somebody obviously ran out there that wasn't supposed to be in or rotated that wasn't supposed to. Now it's first and 10. Holy Cross with a page of 35 with 359 to go in the third. Easy first down. All right. Do what? We get up a lot of free real estate tonight. Yeah, we've, we've made them earn it. Now we got a late guy running the field. That's another. You can't do that. That's another well, I, flag. I, th I think Coach JT called him. Come on. We're too it's good a, and too veteran of a ball club to have this kind of shenanigans going on. Well, that's the problem. I that's think, crazy. I think this isn't our veterans. I think the younger guys aren't communicating with each other on who's in, who's out. And you're seeing some of these second string guys that are getting some reps that aren't used to be able to, that aren't used to communicating and letting them know who's in, who's out. Because you know as well as I do in a game where you might go in, you might not. You're standing right by coach and you're waiting to hear your number called. But you got to listen. You got to keep your eyes and ears open and, and know what's going on out there and no personnel if you're watching the game you should know who in who is in at your position because you should be watching the game and pay attention we're better than that yep no doubt about it and again want to say thank you to bob user productions always up here in the booth as our chief production engineer Robbie Euser taking care of business for your next wedding event, party bar mitzvah, anything you need filmed or edited. Give the best in the business a ring at 738-1447. Bob Euser Productions. First down and 10, Holy Cross. All right, first and 10 Tigers from the Patriot 35. We must have called timeout. We did. They didn't take it off the board. I mean, we almost jumped all sides. That would have been embarrassing for him. 
Come on now. <laughs> and they're looking back at their coach once again, getting the play call. They'll send a receiver in motion across the formation. Trips near side, split out top of the field. Wooten's going to hand it off to number 33. He's going to run up the middle. Woo! Right Tell you what, Tony will put a hat on you. Sure do. That's Hurwitz. He get in Hurwitz. there. Put the hat back. on you. He can run, and looks like he likes to hit, too. I like him. All right, they're going to stay with the empty set. Trips near side. Twins at the top of the field. Wooten takes the pass to center. Throws a near side. Caught by... Kirkwood, and he's going to be nice tackled immediately. Great job. I feel the wind pick it up and the air getting a little cooler. Feels good. That was number 28, Jordan Stipe on the tackle. We might get a little precipitation. Ooh, I hope not. Not yet. Come on now. Hey, the equipment's in the Be jinxing me. I'm just saying. Two fifty-five and counting. We're in the third period. This is the second time that Holy Cross has had the ball in the second half. We've only had it once and scored. Wooten takes the pass from center, throws the near side deep, and it's being complete and out of bounds. Ooh, I tell you what, Stipe looked like he had him kind of wrapped up there a little bit. But I think because the ball was thrown out of bounds, it's uncatchable. Yeah, maybe so. I didn't, I didn't see where it, I didn't see where it fell, but no, it was, it was ten yards out of bounds. Oh, yeah. okay. Got to give him a chance, QB. All right, fourth down three from the Patriot 27-yard line. Tell you what, you know, the press box here is real small. That's why we're outside. I'm just looking behind us. It's tighter than Noah's Ark up there, man. We got two of everybody up there. Come on. Trips to the top of the field. They're going to hand it off to Candy right at the middle. Uh -oh. He's going to gas this for the 27-yard touchdown. Uh -huh. You know what? Good for him. He's the best guy they hit. He's gaining all the yards yep, tonight. Sure has. So with 2.30 to go in the third, the Good Tigers player. get on the board. Candy takes it over from 27 to make it 43 to 6 with the PAT pending. And because it's the opponents scoring, let's talk a little trash. Do it. River Parish Disposal, our family's company, has been picking up your commercial garbage in the greater New Orleans area for almost 40 years now. Give me a call, Danny Wimprine, at the office, 738 7700, for all your commercial garbage needs. River Parish Disposal, our business stinks, but it's picking up. The extra point now, is good. place kick is good. So with 2.30 to go in the third, it's now the Patriots 43 to the Tigers 7. And that was Heitmeyer with the PAT. Uh, good job by them, Kevin. You know, no matter if it's our first guys in, second string guys, they're continuing to fight, get down there and get some points on the board for the Tigers. So. Good job. We got 2.30 left here in the third quarter. 43-7, to seven, Patriots on top. You're an Irish fan. Notre Dame Irish. Yep. I used to be. You notice the, uh, the fight song by Holy Cross? You, did that sound familiar to you? Is that the Irish fight song? Yeah. Is it? You know why? No. Obviously, the Holy Cross being uh, Catholic school, right? Yeah, yeah. They were founded by the Order of Holy Cross. Also, Dr. Daniel Priest. Bordas. Priest, is that right? And pretty much a lot of the Holy Cross Dr. Catholic Dr. schools around the country, that's their I hear you. That'd be the one. Yep, I used to be a fan. How are they doing this year? I'm just joking. I'm joking. Better than Memphis Tigers. <laughs> oh, man. Don't remind me. <laughs> No, they are. They're playing well this year. I like to, I like to see them get back in the mix a little bit. <clears throat> All right, deep for the Patriots. Taylor deep. Ren Taylor and Smith. Squib kick. Crum feels it at the 35-yard line. Just takes up the middle all himself, and he's gonna get it to the 45. I'll tell you what, he's a beast, man. I don't no, he really is. Him. I don't know if I'd want to jump in front of him if I was one of those guys. <laughs> So with 2.20 to go in the third, the Patriots will have it first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. Good job of him just securing the ball, Kevin. Getting it forward, putting two hands on it, and doing what we got to do. Tell you what, though, that was a hot shot. That, that's it was. Kick. He fielded that like a shortstop. Good style. hands by him. Well, yeah. he's a baseball player, too, now. Remember yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. But he is a baseball player. He could, he could pitch. There was no the mitt with this, though. You got that's an right. ball, ball with no mitt. That's right. Coming at you at Mach 5. All right, backup quarterback. McCready's in. Wins to the top of the field will come near side. And it's going to be uh -oh. 
Crum off the left side. Crum and oh, he got tripped off and he falls down to 19. Number 17. It's almost unfair. Yeah. Well, you know what though, Chauncey's got to get his touches too. No, no, no. You know, saying, unfortunately for unfortunately for him, he doesn't get his hands on the ball as much as we'd like to see him. And really. I'd really like to see him play a little bit more linebacker as well yeah. because last year he was, I mean, he was a demon on the defensive side. But uh, this year our guys have really grown up and played a little better. And you've seen us more in two linebacker sets. We really haven't had that third linebacker in as much. And some of our guys have played a little bit more, uh, you know, of, of a couple of. Uh, he stepped out of the 26-yard line. McCready goes to the right, going to keep it. And no gain, second down. We've played a little bit more of that five defensive back set, Kevin, where yeah. you got a nickel back on each side. and uh, But, uh, yeah, we'd like to see him on the defensive side. He, he ran to the football and liked to, liked to try to hurt people when he tackled them. Well, it's good to see him get his hands on the ball a little and bit more. Because it was such a new position for him. He didn't really understand the position. Right. But yet he ran he around. Flew around. Yeah. Like Coach JT said, you know, back in the day, you know, I don't care if you make a mistake, but do it going Mach 5, right. knocking the mess out of somebody. Right. And he did. 110 and counting. Ball in the middle of the field. Will come near side. Barry takes the handoff. He fights hard. To the 24. Gain I'll tell of you three. What. August, he runs pretty good, man. Runs pretty hard. But he should. He's a senior. Number 21, August Barry. He's 5'7", 170 pounds. But he hits it with a full head of steam. Yep. I like the way he runs the ball. Third down six. We're under a minute. 49 seconds to be exact in counting. In the third quarter. Only in the third. We got 43 points on the board. My mom said Notre Dame is great this year. Thanks, Ma. Again, thanks for the clarification. You're the best. She got your back. <laughs> Love his father. Yeah, that's right. Power play to far side of Barry. He's be tackled for a loss Barry by three Tigers. For a big loss. We'll probably go for it Number here. Number 51 leading that charge. Not probably just a basic handoff up the middle. Why not, why not try to kick a long field goal, though? He might. Why not? He was hitting him in pregame from this long. Yeah. I think he could hit. He, well, he hit um, He was up to 50 yards. Yeah, he was, he was hitting him. He was trying to hit him in pregame from the 45 yard he line. He hit a 40, 47 last week, I believe, yeah. which is a career. No, 41. And that's the end of the third quarter. So at the end of the three quarters, it's the Patriots 43 to Tigers 7. And McCready might be over here trying to get his uh, kick and shoot one. I think he is. All right, third quarter highlights. It was 37-0 at halftime. The Patriots on one play with 7.45 to go into third. Wren took it 94 yards for the touchdown. Diggy missed the PAT, made it 43-0, and then with 2.30 to go in the third. Handy from Holy Cross got the Tigers on the board for a 27-yard run. Heitmeyer made the PAT, and it's 43-7 as we go into the fourth. All right. Let me go back to that field goal. Was, I want to say it might be 41, but whatever it was, it was pretty long for Austin. But this might beat it if it is. Let's see. Fourth and 11 for the Patriots. First play of the fourth quarter. Looks like the Patriots are going to line up for a field goal. The end of the We're going to spot it. 34. 34. So it'll be a 44. I like to see it. Punch it straight through. 44-yard field goal attempt by McCready. Ball in the middle of the field. Let's see what happens. Yep. I'm, I'm doing a Leon. And as this will stop the play. Timeout, Patriots. That gave me something looking at my notes here. I'm sure I made a comment about it. No, nope, we're not going to keep it going. We called a timeout. Anyway. Go ahead. Kevin, for that third quarter of action, I didn't get to anybody, but for that third quarter of action, I want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Brian Mullins and Connor Mullins over there at Yaya's Comfort Food. Appreciate those guys. Go check them out. They have uh, daily breakfast and lunch specials. I'm over there pretty much every day for one of them. Give them a call, 575-3434. They can cater your special event, do whatever you need to do. Go check them out at 2317 at the end of Hickory Avenue in Harahan. Yaya'sComfortFood.com to see everything that they do. Hashtag just like you like it, 575-3434. Yaya's Comfort Food. We appreciate your support of the Patriots. Here's the reason. It was a Jesuit game, 41 yards. This would be a 44. Snap. 
side. Play day jumped off sides. Oh. And I think he boomed it right he through. He sure did. That would have been a career long. Now a field goal, which is good. But it's not going to be a career long for him now. That's right. Decline it. <laughs> That's right. God, he kicked out yeah, another he, 10 yards. Yeah, he kicked it. It could have been good for, from at least 50-52 for sure. All right, so that would have been a career long at 44. Now it's going to be a 39-yard attempt. And the snap was bad. It was. Snap good was job bad. Good Guggenheim. hold. All right, don't want to jinx us, but if he makes his field goal, that would be 17 consecutive possessions with a score. I'll be jinxing them. No, we're not. Like, Come on, bro. Hey. We ain't kidding, bro. We got the moose listen to him. Snap. Place. Pick us up. Has a distance, and it's good. Nice job. From 39 yards out, McCready drills it. It's now 46-7 with 11.53 to go in the ballgame. Ooh, he boomed that one, too. Guy almost looks like in the offseason. Guy must have been working out a little bit, huh? I uh, think so. Maybe he was working out at any time fitness. Go check him out at 5200 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie. The owners are Damon Leper, class of 97, Janice Toops Leper, class of 01. 5200 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie, Louisiana, 504-218-4814. They're offering 24-7 access to over 4,000 clubs worldwide. Health plan discounts, tanning, cardio equipment, strength training, free weights, circuit equipment, personal training, small group classes, TRX training system, and functional training. Mention Patriot Nation during sign-up and receive half off of enrollment and 10% off monthly rate. The Metairie location only at 5200 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie. 504-218-4814. Anytime fitness. We appreciate your support of Patriots. Getting these boys right. And the Patriots will kick it off. Hey, he ought to go talk to the guy who jumped off sides. Say, man, what are you doing? I had a career long. It's Seriously, 34. man, come on. You're messing me up. <laughs> Cramping my style. All right, 17 consecutive possessions. That's 14 touchdowns and three field goals. Impressive. Guggenheim, I'm mean, assuming uh, McCree to kick it. Yeah, guy, I don't know. He's going to get my second team kickoff team. I don't know where to line up. We feel it at the five yard line. A little middle return. Now it comes near side. Brace a couple tackles. He shoved out of bounds near the 30. That's Rosano. So with 11.39 to go in the ball game, it'll be first and 10 Tigers from their own. I'll tell you what, McCready does a good job on that little three-step kickoff too, Kevin. He does. A lot of times you see those kickers, they want a good, nice 12-yard run at it. But he still boots it pretty high and far on that three-step kick. Yep. 25. You know, he can get in the end zone on a three-step kick. And that's yep. really the goal is getting the end zone. Yep. I don't know why he doesn't do it, though. Twins at the top. Twins near side. Because we're going to pin him inside the 20. <laughs> Wooten throws it far side, and it's going to be Ooh. short hop, incomplete. Standing for Kirkwood. Stipe almost looked like he had a good jump on it, almost made the play on the ball. All right, let's start looking ahead. We're going to have uh, an extra day of rest in preparation for the Roman Raiders next week. Yep. Which I don't know we don't have a score against Brother Martin, but I would think they would probably win that one. So that will be uh, next uh, Saturday's game, Catholic Championship. That's it, baby. Got to go to work. Oh, yeah, we will. Put it on them. Same formation. Wooten throws it far side. This time it's caught by Kirkwood. Number and he's shoved two, out of bounds. Kirkwood on the reception. On the game about maybe four, let's see. Third down. Call it seven. Yep. They'll stay with two tight, uh, two receivers at the top, two near side. Wooten, pump fakes, looks near side, steps up in the pocket, and he's got hit. Oh, he got hit. Get it, get it. Oh. oh. And had Morgan not slipped, and he, he could have picked it off. Let me give some shout outs right here, Kevin. That was number, looked like number 48, I believe. No, that was 40. 40, 40? No, 40. Yeah, 40. that's right. Angelo's 48. Cole Landry, and then number 98, John Edmonds. On uh, on the uh, hit right there by, to the quarterback and almost almost put it right in the hands of one of our DBs. Good job right there by our guys getting after the QB. All right, Morgan be the lone back. 
feel the punt. He does at the 31-yard line, breaks a few tackles, comes near side. Flag in the play. He's dancing around to the 35. And he's tackled at 36, but there's a couple flags. Yeah. Not quite sure what that was about, but nice Against return us, right blocking there. Him back, it looks like. Morgan getting his hand on the ground, not falling, and getting that thing vertical. Ah. So the backup came in, second offense, and they scored. Let's see if they can do it again. Yep. Keep our streak alive. You know what? That might be a school record. I mean, that's long. I don't know if we ever had 17 consecutive possessions. Right now. That's a lot. That's a lot, but I bet it's not a record. Just, some, just imagine with some of the district play that we've been in over the yeah, years. We've also taken a knee a few times in some of these guys. We have, we have. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, if you. Ball is after 24 yards. I don't know. Be interesting. You know what? I got just a guy to do the investigation for that job. Robbie Usler. And his name is Deuce Deuce. <laughs> okay? And he's the guy. And I bet he can find out the info. And I'll check in with him next week. <laughs> We hand it off to Barry up the middle. Barry keeping it high and First tight. down, gets it to the 39-yard line. Protecting the ball. Like I mentioned before, August Barry is a senior. 5'7", yep. 170 pounds. It's nice to see him get his hands on the ball. Gain of 15. First he's got, down. Seems like he's gotten better and better over the last few weeks too, Kevin. Yeah, well, he's, he's getting more opportunities. Well, that's what I was about to say. He, they're giving him an opportunity. We've played a little better, and it's putting him in the game. But when he's gotten the ball, he's running really hard. 10-15 and counting. Patriots line up with twins receivers near side. It's like Taylor's the quarterback now. He's going to hand it off to number 34 up the middle. Ja'Cory Lee, he had a touchdown last week in yep. the game. Yeah, that's right. He had a big, long touchdown. We weren't He's the one that kind of more really ready for. That kept the uh, score in uh, the ninth possession. We were just trying to kneel it out, and he scored. Gain of four to the 43-yard line. Second down six, 9-30 in county. Taylor comes near side, hands it off to Lee. Got it to the 47. That's Lee. To the uh, third down and a long two. Down in about three. Ball is at the 47-yard line. Hey, well, you know what? There's a lot of fans still here. Nobody's left. I know. It's homecoming night, and all the kids are playing in the end zone. But, you know, even a lot of Holy Cross people haven't left either. Yeah, that's right. Good for them. Yeah. Let's enjoy this game for another eight minutes. Ball in the middle of the field, Taylor under center. Oh, uh -oh. Runback ran the wrong way. Now he can get slammed for a loss. Taylor, Taylor came to the right. All the backs ran to the left. Woo! And that's one of those things, Kevin. Oh, that late come, flag. Uh-oh. What we got going on here? I don't know. I don't, a little extracurricular here. And they're talking to us, so probably one of our guys. But I tell you, we uh, you'll learn that with experience, Kevin. When you're in the huddle, you got to take charge of the huddle. You got to talk to your guys, look them in the eyes, speak clearly. And then the same thing, when you have your cadence out there, if you're going to switch the play, speak up, speak clear, take command of the offense, and let these guys know what's going on. You ever uh, either call the play or the snap count to one side of the huddle and then to the other side of the huddle said like the opposite and have guys run each other or, or have half the line, like count, say it's on two and on to the left side and then to one and the well, other I forgot, side? Well, I forgot the snap count before. <laughs> yeah, I've, for, I've forgotten the snap count before. You, you get up there and you get to thinking. And all of a sudden, it's on two. And you say, hut, and you start to move, and nobody else moves. And you're like, oh, man, did I really do that? Well, yeah, it, it, it happens. You know, you get you thinking too much. or I Move the ball all the way back to the but 29. Even, it happened, I mean, shoot, that happens more than you know. I remember when I was in Canada, <laughs> and I, it was my first game playing. And we had this, this uh, I guess we'd flip, we'd flip the... Uh, flip the play from one side to the other side. We call it Xerox, like you're making a copy. So instead of going to the right, right. you're going to the left, but you're running. 
and I and I and I said Xerox, Xerox, and all the guys, offensive linemen, are looking at me like, man, nobody ever checks to play. We're ready to rock and roll. Well, guess what? I forgot to tell the running back. <laughs> so I run one day, run way that I wanted to go, and he went the opposite way. And uh, so yeah, that stuff happens. McCready with a high punt, Ooh. fair caught at the 35 yard line, and that. It's the first time McCready punted since the Jesuit game. And that penalty, look, on that offensive lineman, look what he's doing on the sideline. Coach Jerry was barking in his ear like a Marine Corps drill instructor. He's doing push-ups. That's right. And he's got two guys counting to make sure he does it right. Yeah, and Bo Curtis was about to go sit on his back. Mm. <laughs> so that broke the, the string of 17 consecutive drives. Scoring. And that's the first time that McCready punted since the Jesuit game. Yep. How about that? How about that? It's a good streak, brother. Can't wait to hear what you come up with for next week. Oh, we'll think of something. <laughs> all right, they give it to Handy off the right Handy side. The right Tell you side. what, that's been their best play all day. Oh, yeah. Really good player. Played really well. Run hard and physical. And uh, he's got some pr pretty good speed, too, Kevin, on the outside. He's run well between the tackles tonight, but when he turns into the outside, he's showing some good speed to get to the edge. Man, Coach Jerry's still giving him the business. And it off to right Handy side. again. He's, He's down the right sideline, but there's a flag. That'll probably be a holding call. We have a flag they ran him out of bounds at the Patriots 30-yard line, but it'll probably come back. 7.20 to go in the ballgame. Face mask against the Patriots. No, face mask against us. Ah, wow. They have more yards to it. All right, we're going to spot it. The Patriot 25-yard line, so with 7.20 to go in the ballgame, first and 10 Tigers from the Patriot 25. And it has been a good game for the Patriots so far. We've played well offensively, defensively, and special teams. We've actually scored. Um, but, you know, we're starting to rotate some of these younger guys. And I really like that, Kevin, because, like I said, throughout the course of a season, you got to gain some more depth. Who can you trust to go in there and make a play? Who's going to make the bonehead penalty? Who's going to step up and make the big hit? Who wants to make the catch? Who wants the ball in their hands? So you figure these things out late in these football games where you can get some of these younger guys in there and see what happens. You got a chance to hear the, the Patriot cheerleaders. The the kind of We've done a couple basketball games in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Never done a football game. Well, I'll take it back. We did. De La Salle mm -hmm. in uh, 14. Sure and, uh, did. Pan Am, but well, we actually did it a couple weeks ago in the crowd top right. <laughs> well, that wasn't, but nobody was around wasn't us, as much of this, but yeah. we were at the very top in right. the Pan American. And uh, in the middle of the peeps now, kind of thinking it was uh, gonna rain on us. You know, we might have to do that next week at each Jefferson. Really, right. press spots be tight. I think uh, Mr. Trahan's gonna make that his game of the week. Woo! Yeah. Guess what? What? I might have to call some people, give them the boot. And that's a Rumble <laughs> home game. They had no choice. Uh, that's all right. We're gonna take care of it. We're gonna go buy 300 yards of uh, or 300 feet of uh, extension cable. Yep. Call the game from high up top. The well, hopefully, it's 40 degrees time. and I wear my short sleeve shirt. Yeah. All right, first and ten, Tigers. Take the handoff, throws it far side to receiver number two. All right, get Kirkwood. to him, get to him. And he is going to score, I believe. Uh, did he get in? He did. He did. Touchdown. Shoot. So with 7 8 to go in the ball game, Kirkwood with a 25-yard touchdown. Perception. Makes it 46-13. Boy, boy, boy. Well, it's okay. Because that's you know, like a five-yard pass. He ran 24. Yep. Did a good job getting that thing in the end zone. And I tell you what, they've kind of liked that little flip screen out to the edge. They're throwing short hitches tonight, giving their receivers some room to work. And uh, they've done well with it. Heitmeyer's PAT up, and it is good. So with 7 8 to go in the ballgame, it's now the Patriots 46. The Tigers 14. Kevin, for that scoring job, I want to say thank you once again to Nations Lending. Whether buying a new home or refinancing, Mark Bowen and Nations Lending can help you. 
Nation's lending offers FHA, VA, and USDA loans that can even help those with 580 credit and above. Mark's a graduate, class of 1998, and has over 15 years of mortgage lending experience. He's a proud supporter of the John Curtis Patriots. He can be reached at 225-573-8688. That's 225-573-8688, and his NMLS number is 587-641. Nation's Lending Corporation is an equal opportunity lender, and we appreciate your support of the Patriots. Thirty-seven, teeing it up for Holy Cross. Oh, partner, this is one of those that yep can't end. Kind of keeps dragging on a little bit, but we're going to get through it. Termini to kick it off. Patriots are putting their second team unit out. Davis and Brown will go deep along with Williams. I like to see that number eighteen, Javon Davis. He's an athlete. They have him registered as an athlete. Five ten. 5'10", 160 pound freshman. I'd like to see him back there in that number 18. Looking good. And it looks like we're ready for another kickoff. Connor Roser on a tight end looks lost, but he needs to stay right where he's at. Stop. No, it keeps running. There he goes. But they'll probably keep right there in the middle. Now I'm going to kick it deep. Brown from the three yard line, middle return. 10, 15, 20, has a hold. Puts on a move. Nice move. Oh, there's a flag on the play. Gets it all the way out to the 43-yard line. I'll tell you what, one thing I am impressed with these officials. They can they throw it. They can let it rip, huh? They get some distance. From the back. Ah, I really wanted. Locking them back. Yeah. Really wanted Dominic to be able to get a little more credit, not have that yardage against him. But Dominic's wearing number 22 tonight. He is normally number two. And uh, he's been a great player for us all year. And I'd like to see him get his hands on the ball like that. Yeah, they couldn't find the number two jersey in that, that uh, old school retro uh, jersey. So uh, I'm about to put that jersey on the back of a milk carton. And so if anybody's seen a number two red jersey with the uh, blue and white soda stripes on the side, yeah, bring it back to a 10125 Justin yeah. Highway River Ridge. What's up with that? I'm sure Mr. Brown would like to wear his number. Yes, sir. I'm going to spot it. Gordon, is that the 17-yard line? No, he's got it outside. 17. 17, 17 all right. I think Gordon went in the parking lot. He gone. At the Patriot Nation Men's Club tailgating area getting some tasty yeah, vittles. some burgers. Taylor, quarterback. He gives it off to Lee. Lee, Lee on the carry. Maybe gain a one. Number 42 on the stop. O'Connor. 638 in county. All right, so the Patriots have three more guaranteed they games. Next Saturday at Joe Guinea, 2 o'clock against the Roman Raiders, pretty much for the district championship. Then the following Friday, November 2nd, against Shaw at Tulane. There'll be an off week. We'll be in the top. We'll get a bye, and then we'll play the playoff game the week of the 16th of November. So those are the three guaranteed games. Because then after that, Yeah, uh, a good friend, uh, Mike Strom, the advocate, says the Patriots have been penalized 10 times for 126 yards. Yeah, not good, not no. good. Well, the thing about it is, Kevin, teams that are okay, you might better win those games. When you get to good playoff battles, you're not going to be victorious if you have penalties like that. You just totally negate drives, stops you, forces you to punt. Bad things happen when you have big games with big penalties. But you know what? In recent weeks, though, we haven't had as many penalties. No, we really haven't. But it's, you wouldn't think so by the score, though. 46 to 14. Third down and seven for the Patriots. Ball in the middle of the field. Taylor under center. Going to be a draw play. Oh, got the line of scrimmage and he got thumped. Mm -hmm. Trying to see who that running back was. Number 31. That's the Quinn. That's Quinn. No game, fourth down. Yes, it is. So we're going to punt for the second time in as many possessions. Holy Cross band cranking it up. They're probably getting yep. warmed up. They're going down to Morgan City tomorrow for a band competition. Is that right? Yeah. Good for them. Yeah, give them a chance to. punt for the Patriots. 
You play any instruments? I can play the washboard. I'm not any good at it, but I can make a lot of noise. Oh yeah. But when uh, and, you know when the music's playing, it's loud. Nobody knows. That's right. Low snap. McCready, nice kick. Fair card at the Holy Fair Cross 47 side. yard line. So Holy the Tigers will take it over first and ten. Yard line first with 425 to go. And we know the official timekeeper, Mr. Walter Eckert. We appreciate him yep. taking in a few seconds here and there. Walter and Jay is dead. Yeah. And uh, he's been doing it for a long time. What did he say last week? It was a couple weeks ago. It was 30. Over 40 years. It was 43 years, I yeah. think, is what it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Last year was his first year up in the booth doing wow. the time. Crazy. Good career. You know what? They, they still didn't doing have any, it. He's still a good referee. Didn't have, don't, they don't make him like that anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. They hand it off to that running back number three again. Around the right side. Andy. And he, he has a first down. Picks another first down. He's One a good little running back side. for them. Yeah, it sure is. He's only a sophomore, so. I was just about no. to ask how old he was. Yeah, good no. For them. He's going to do well for them. And you know what? Coach Comp is going to do a good job over there. Oh, he certainly he is. He just has to change the culture. Yep, that's right. Three receivers near side, one far side. He gave it back to him again. Same side, right side. Plenty of room. Right, he dropped the ball. The ball, the ball, ball to the ground. We got it. Yes, sir. Oh, he just dropped the ball. Uh, oh. Sometimes, Kevin, like we said before, you try to do too much. Try to make something happen. and uh, God, you feel for him because he, unfortunately for him, he dropped it. He pretty much was all they had offensively. But the Patriots will take it over with 3.55 to go in the ball game. And they'll have it first and 10 to throw in 34. So we'll go back to Joe Yenny next week in Tulane, and then who knows where we'll have our playoff games because Tulane's got some goofy rule where uh, – there only could be one game, whether it be prep or two lane. Right. One game a week, which is. I'll keep my thoughts myself on that, but, you know, not smart on their part. Taylor got tackled for a loss. Loss of two, second down 12 with 3.40 to go. Yep. So we don't know where we'll play our home playoff games. And, uh, but we'll figure it out, but hopefully it won't be here. Move the ball back to the 34-yard line. Only lost a one. Taylor keeps it, runs it up the middle. And about a gain of three. Third down and eight. Well, I get a little confidence about a young QB. Yeah. Sometimes that's all it takes is to keep the ball and understand, you know what, it didn't hurt too bad. I can try this again and maybe see, the, see it a little bit better and but uh, I remember those days. 250 and counting. Good looking crowd out here tonight, Kev. Very. Do you think the engineers who created spandex alike or ever thought that their material would be stretched to the limits at the point? <laughs> I don't I don't know, maybe so. Just asking. Oh nice. Oh. oh high pass intended for. Number 84. He's got to get his elbow up a little bit more. Blake Trujillo. Get on top of that throw Trujillo. a little bit more. 225 to go in the game. Yeah, his dad was my coach at Little Farms, Mike Troxillo. Oh, yeah? Yep. And, uh, he always, he's been coming to the games for the last few years, he and, he and his wife, and I appreciate that, and it's good to always see him. You know, it's nice to see his son get out there, get some playing time. McCready is in there to punt. So McCready will punt it for the third time. Different guy. I'm about to talk to the head coach. We had 17 consecutive possessions where we scored points. Now we got three consecutive punts. I don't know. Well, I'm going to talk to Coach JT about that. Uh-oh. There you go. McCready. Wobbly kick. A little. Oh, he oh, ran into on. the guy. Come on. Well, the guy's calling for a fair catch, but he run right into him. That's uh, That'd be an interference. Number 20. Number 20. Craig Gullum, the sophomore, 5'7", 155 pounds. Comes with experience, Kevin. Gotta be aware. Get out, get out there and do it. And like I said, your football IQ is gonna go up. But uh, you gotta get out there and know it. But you know, get away from him. See him catch a signal, fair catch. Don't run up his chest. You know what? I'm gonna say this, and it, we'll just use him as an example. And I don't know what his history is. Something you and I take for granted. 
we grew up playing football four or five years old in the street with older kids in the neighborhood, then playing Little League football. Right. Right now, Little League football is, is being fading away. Nobody's playing. So a lot of kids aren't playing in seventh, eighth, or even ninth grade, so they don't understand the game like you and I did. That's a great point. Which because I, took a, I didn't realize that talking to Coach Fahlbacher last week. So like, it's it's a great point, that. Kevin, because my boys, five and six years old, Baylor and Madden, they wanted to play tackle football this year. Not one playground in the entire Jefferson Parish could field the six-year-old team. Not one. And it happened not only with the sixes, with plenty of other ages as well, because the NFL is trying to push flag football so much, you know, maybe I'm not blaming it on the moms, but people are worried about people getting hit. But really, statistically, Kevin, if you look at it, uh-oh, watch self. Andy up the middle for a long run. He's zigzagging on the field. Can he beat Morgan? And I think he did. He does. 57-yard wow. touchdown run by the best player in the field. There's a late flag. It's probably on us. Now we're getting sloppy. Yeah. Get them off the field. That's ridiculous. Statistically, if you look at it, Kevin, when they're running around and flying with no helmets on and no protection, you get hurt a lot in flag football when you're young. Because I don't know if you've ever seen five- and six-year-olds hit with pads on. Yeah. They're not going too fast. No. There's not a lot of not a lot of click-clacking going on, right. if you know what I mean. So, um, But you're right. It's starting to die around the country. Not a lot of kids are growing up playing. I remember when I was six years old, sitting at Miss Jean's desk as a six-year-old boy, crying because I couldn't play until I was seven the next year. I grew up wanting to play. I wanted to play football for the rest of my life. And same thing with you. You grew up wanting to do this. Yeah. And as you play, you make those mistakes, you learn. I could, I watched all if you're not on the field, you can't do it. College games, pro games I watched. I mean, I knew the rules. I just took it for granted. I mean, I'm, I'm probably yeah. above average on that. But... But I was talking to Coach Tony about it, and he's like, you know, to be honest with you, all these kids just on playing, they don't know. And I'm like, right. really? Wow, just so foreign to me. But I'm out of school, so I don't understand, you know. But Yeah, but I can tell you this. Crazy. In the draft, okay, you, you watch the NFL draft, I know you do. Over the last three years, I've heard of more guys that Mo Kuyper or the other analysts, they've said, this guy just started playing football as a junior in high school. Yeah. This guy just started playing football. Uh, he was he was he was a track guy in college. He never played football before. But this and that. But you're right. That they're, they're not growing up as six seven year old kids playing football, learning the game. You talk about football IQ. You can't have the IQ if you've never seen it. You never learned it. You don't watch it on TV. Right. That's what I tell my boys. Want to be good at this? Sit down and let's watch the game. Try yeah. to understand it. Understand the positions. Know what a receiver is. Know what the split back. You know what? Know know what the wing back is. Know what the know what a safety is. You gotta watch. You gotta watch it and learn. And you know, just like playing the best. You want to be the best. Play the best. That's why you know I I really like when we show up to play. The teams want to play that they want to play their best. They want to win the Super Bowl and beat John Curtis. But I think uh, you know you're right, Kevin. That's a great point. I think it's uh, hopefully when my kids are of age, they will have had a lot of experience playing the game. Did he miss the PET? He missed it? I thought he made it. I was talking. In. I thought he made the PET. Let's get a clarification. Hey, did he miss the PET? No, he's good. Did I put it up? No. That's right, I thought he did. He made it. He made it. So, yeah, when I was sitting there talking. I thought, oh, that Chris Ward was good. All right, buddy. So it's now 46-21 with 155 to go in the ball game. And Kevin, for that score, we want to say thank you once again to Exit Realty, broker owner Kel Kopecky, Patriot alum, their service all, oh, excuse me, <laughs> their full service brokerage firm, residential, commercial, and leasing. They have cutting edge tech to help buyers and sellers. They offer retirement and beneficiary benefits for all their agents. Go check them out at 2200 Veterans Boulevard, Suite 206 in Kenner. Give him a call at the office, 298-3948. That's 298-3948. Or see him at the website, www.exitrealtynola.com. Cal Kopecky, broker owner, Exit Realty Nola Premier. We appreciate your support of the Patriots. Two penalties against the Patriots. All right, so here's the deal. We had a penalty, late penalty in the end zone after the guy scored a touchdown. Then we had a rough and a kicker. We've had a lot of, even the starters has a penalty, but I'll tell you what, the backups have had yeah. way more penalties. Yeah, they need, to, they, need to, they need to have a talk. Shore that up quickly. Yep. we got a minute 55 to go so in they, the ball game. They're going to kick it off from our 35-yard line. Kicking it from the third. Nope. There's no reason yeah. not to onside kick the ball. Why not? Why not? <sighs> I'm going to take a load off here if you Why don't not? mind. Why not? Why not? What are you taking me to eat after this, man? Let's call, let's, call, let's call Connor, see if Yaya's is still open, huh? They close. Come on, man. A little, little 10 o'clock snack. 
All right, it looks like we're ready for All right, so Holy Cross is going to kick it from the Patriot. 30. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, why not? On side it. And they will. And we jump on it, Brown. Jump on it. Tell you what, we didn't do a good job. The first guy couldn't feel it, hit his chest. Patriots, but then the fumble. Down to Brown, jumped on it and saved the day yep. with 1.50 Brown to go in the ballgame. Why not kick the onside kick, right? Got to do it. Good job of us being Johnny on the spot, taking care of business and making it happen. We're getting the ball back with a minute 50 left. Patriots on top, 46 to 21, with some late touchdowns by the Tigers. I want to say thanks for joining us once again on JohnCurtisPatriots.com via YouTube. This is Kevin and Robbie and I's eighth year doing this. Amazing. Huh? Time flies when you're having fun, man. This has uh, been a great experience for us to stay involved with the uh, the school and the team and the kids and watch a lot of these kids grow up. And uh, you know, tonight was homecoming. We got to see the court walk and some of these young girls that we've seen grow up as well. Patriots get the ball back. Yep. Taylor hands it off to Quinn. Quinn, the ball carrier. Maybe loss of one. That's a no game. 130 season counting. We're going to run this out. No gain. No gain. Hey, you guys stay with us. We'll have a brief post game as we'll go through the uh, score and recap, and then we'll set next week's game up with the Raiders. Their only loss is to a team out of state. Uh, they've been playing some good ball lately. Yep. And off to Quinn again, short gain. Quinn again up the middle this time. About a minute to go. We'll probably run one more, more and then call it quits. Third down. 45 seconds of counting. This will probably be it. Yep. Let's run this thing out, my brother. Yeah, snap it with about two seconds. Hey, 18 seconds on the play clock. This will be the last play. I'm going to break this for seconds. six. That'd be nice. Taylor comes near side. I see keeps it. Taylor. Comes around the corner. Taylor right and it's going to be a little bit of a foot race. They're going to shove him out of bounds near midfield with 18 seconds to go. We have a flag. We got a flag on a play. So now we're going to play one more play. You know what I've never understood? What's that? Why guys on the sidelines, <laughs> this happens all the time. Guys on the sidelines, when a, when a, somebody's running close to the sidelines and they get shoved out of bounds, like you get run First over. I guess you're not paying attention or something. I don't know. Anybody came to me, I was always backing up. But I guess, um, yeah, and then they shoved us out of bounds when we were already out of bounds, I guess. So I'm going to move it up a little bit more with 17 seconds left. Clock's going to stop on the defensive penalty. And, of course, we're out of bounds anyway. But we're going to get one more play, it looks like. And JT's probably going to. Throw the Hail Mary. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, this will be the last play. We'll send Twins receivers to the left. Quinn and Lee are the halfbacks. We'll go to the left. Lee takes a handoff, breaks a couple tackles. Oh, he's going to take tell it. You? What he did I tell you? Oh, my goodness. Late flag here. Holy Cross. Got a little rougher. I got. Let's see if they keep it. Was that on them? That's Should have been. Kevin, that's Ja'Cory Lee again. Yep. Freshman, five foot 11, 165 pounds. Run strong. Nope. Call back against uh, us. Uh, uh, I saw the Holy Cross guy rougher than that guy. Yeah. After the fact, I thought it was going to be a uh, Maybe we were first. Oh, my goodness. Because that guy was on the ground, and, and their guy was, you know, working him over. I want to remind everyone, next Saturday at 2 o'clock, you have got to be at Joe Yenny Stadium. We play Rumble. All right, moves the ball back to Joe the 43-yard line. 2 o'clock next Saturday. You have got to be there. Cancel all your plans. You've got to be at Joe Yenny, 2 o'clock Saturday. That's where the action's at. You have no excuse. We're going to take a knee. That's right, Bob. They got no excuse. Mr. Be Bob, there. That's Bob saying. Be there next week. Taylor takes the knee. That and that's a wrap. So the John Curtis Christian Patriots defeat the Holy Cross Tigers 46-21.
to 21. Coach JT is now 577, 64 and 6 in his career. The Patriots improved to 8 0 overall, 4 0. And Catholic League play and now sets up the district championship next Saturday against the Roman Raiders at Joe Uni at 2 o'clock. Right where we want to be, my brother. I agree. And our premier post game sponsor, of course, is our good buddy Frank Masco with National Temperature Control. Family owned and operated with over 40 years of experience in keeping people comfortable all over the greater New Orleans area. Frank Masco Jr. and Frank III, fully licensed and insured, trained comfort specialists. They service all makes and models of heating and cooling equipment. Some of the services are annual cleanings, preventing the maintenance agreements, monthly filter changes, indoor air quality, UV lights, sealing and installing duct work, air grills, bathroom and kitchen ventilation, and provide 24-hour service. So give them a call. 467-0440. That's 467-0440. Visit the website at ntcnola.com. Craig Masco, National Temperature Control. We appreciate your support of the Patriots. All right, here's your score and recap. The Patriots got the opening drive. Drove it uh, pretty much the length of the field in 11 plays. We got stalled inside the 10. McCready kicked the field goal to make it Patriots 3, Tigers 0. And really, from that point forward, it was all Patriots. At the 341 mark of the first quarter, Corey Wren had a one-yard touchdown run. McCready's PAT made it 10 to 0. Patriots that capped off a three-play, 30-yard, 36-yard uh, drive. Excuse me, taking 112 off the clock. The big play on that drive was a 30-yard pass completion between Guggenheim and Taylor, and that's how the first quarter ended. Uh, but quickly into the second quarter, with 10:47 to go in the half, Guggenheim had a one-yard touchdown run. McCready's PAT made it Patriots 17, Tigers 0. That was a seven-play, 73-yard uh, drive, taking 212 off the clock. Then with 7:22 to go in the half. Guggenheim hit Davis on a nice 21-yard pitch and catch into the end zone. McCready added another PAT, making it 24-0 to zero Patriots, and that capped off a uh, six-play, 67-yard drive, taking 122 off the clock. Then with 5.40 to go in the half, Corey Wren had a 65-yard pump return. The PAT was blocked. The Patriots led 30-0. to zero. Uh, With two minutes to go in the half, Chauncey Crum had an 18-yard touchdown run. They put in a big E for the PAT. He made it. And made it Patriots 37, Tigers 0. They capped off a six-play, 65-yard drive, taking 242 off the clock. And that's how uh, the first half ended. Then the Patriots quickly got on the board again on 7.45 to go in the third. Corey Wren had a 94-yard touchdown run. Big E missed the PT. That made it 43-0. to zero. Holy Cross got on the board with 2.30 to go in the third. Uh, Handy had a 27-yard touchdown run. Heitmeyer added a PT and made it 43-7. to seven. With 11.53 to go in the ball game, McCready added a 39-yard field goal, making it 46-7. And then Holy Cross got two more touchdowns uh, by Kirkwood with uh, 7-8 to go in the game. 25-yard touchdown run, Heitmeyer's PT made it 46-14. And with 1.55 to go in the ball game, Handy had a 57-yard touchdown run. Heitmeyer added the PAT, making it Patriots 46, Tigers 21. And Danny, you got to be pleased with the Patriots' performance overall. I know it got a little sloppy with some of the backups with the penalties and stuff. We can shore that up. But uh, I think it sets up for a great Catholic League championship matchup next Saturday with the Rumble Raiders. Well, like I told you before, no place we'd rather be the next Saturday at 2 o'clock against Rumble as, a, with, as an undefeated team. Uh, you mentioned we've been playing well. Uh, these guys, you know, great thing about tonight, Kevin, is I really think we finished the game very healthy also. No injuries on the night. Played very efficiently offensively. Defense did, did their job getting us the ball back, scored a special teams touchdown, which is fantastic. Nice to get some points on special teams and flip the momentum back on our side. But really just a great night. Homecoming, couldn't be happier. Uh, great atmosphere for these kids, and uh, congratulations to them. All right, the Patriots defeat the Holy Cross Tigers 46-21. Again, advanced uh, to the season, to the record, to eight wins, zero losses, four and zero in Catholic play. Next Saturday, uh, Joe Yanni Stadium, BM Metairie. 2 o'clock kickoff gets the Rumble Raiders. If you're there or in the area, please come. If not, listen to us on johncurtispatriots.com. Uh, we'd love to have you. That is going to be for the district championship. We'll have the broadcast at 1.45 p.m. pregame, 2 o'clock kickoff. So on behalf of our Robbie Utzer, our buddy Nick, who's filling in for Robbie, uh, Gord A. Bear, Danny Wimper, I'm Kevin. Until next Saturday, 1.45 when the Patriots take on the Rumble Raiders. Go Patriots. God bless. <laughs>